in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed God has worked with us way past the issue of denominations and personal doctrinal affiliations and all of that. We are, we, are, we are members of his body. What happens to one happens to all. It's an ideology that we must carry. It's an ideology we must sustain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Very quickly, we'll get to the business of the night. The keys of the kingdom. We're on a revision series for some of you who are just coming. So many people we honor and we welcome and we truly bless you tonight. Let's get to the word of God. The keys of the kingdom. This is part two. We're on a revision series. Um, the way that God trains us in this place is very intentional. It's very meticulous very defined the the exegesis of scripture here is not just meant to be part of the things that happen in a service but by the grace of God there is a portrait there is there is a picture of what God seeks that we become praise the Lord and as we strive by the guidance of his spirit and through the spirit of wisdom we continue to bring teachings that are spiritual in context, that are balanced, life applicable, and are transforming again. And um, every once in a while, before we get into another level, God would grant us grace to do um, somewhat of a revision. That means to go back and look at the things that we have learned by the Spirit correct the gray areas because you see nobody leaves what works nobody leaves what works and if our christian lives um if it continues to be unfruitful we will be frustrated the bible says herein is our father glorified john 15 and verse 8 that ye bear much fruit not just fruit much fruit it says, so shall ye be my disciples. This will be proof that I mentored you. Your results will show that I mentored you. Are we together? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. We started off last week. Jesus was speaking about the keys of the kingdom. And I started just a quick recap how that there is only one key to the kingdom. One key to the kingdom. And that key is not an object is the person christ christ being the door the authorized entrance point we observed last week that um there are not only doors there are also windows there are other illegitimate routes into a house but the authorized channel to any house is called a door if a visitor jumps through your window he's not welcome although he's in your house are we together so Jesus said, I am the door. Jesus never said, I am the window. I am the door. There is only one key to the kingdom. The Christ, the door. But when you get into the life of the kingdom through the experience that we call new birth, then the kingdom functions by keys. A key is a symbol for access. Access. So the keys of the kingdom are the truths that grants the believers access to function effectively to be in experience a true representation of the image the character of the christ and to manifest the possibilities that are in this kingdom and um the keys of the kingdom 
are the access points that activate and deactivate possibilities the faith life is a compendium of infinite possibilities that means there is no end to how far there is no end to the potentials that are contained in this faith life my life and your life no matter how yielded cannot exhaust all the possibilities that are contained in the christ and so our life should become an like like an explorer's life we continue to explore different dimensions of the possibilities contained in the christ i said something last week that i would like to say before we take off from there the word of god is very important in helping believers know god and in helping believers become effective and the word of god is important because it defines the boundaries of god's commitment to man please you have to understand this god is not indefinitely committed to man there's no record in scripture that allows for god to be committed to you anyhow he's committed by predefined conditions and that condition is encapsulated in the word it's important to know this now his compassion can respond to any issue of your life but it takes the word of god to define how far his hand can come towards you it's very very important compassion is the ability to be touched with the feelings of a man's infirmity but he has exalted his word the bible says above his name i say this because many times believers think that god is committed to them and we continue to quote a lot of wise sayings trado african approaches and we believe that it will it will draw sympathy and because god is love he will respond but then you will never see results until you bring yourself in alignment to the word of god and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture that is able to make you wise unto salvation this is very very important the word of god defines the boundaries of god's commitment the word of god shows how far he can help you any provision that the word of god does not allow cannot be accessed by the saints so it is important that believers don't learn and know the word of god just as an option if you want to be spiritual then take the word seriously if you don't want to be spiritual you can roam around the things of god no there is no victory outside of the word the word of god is the testament is god's commitment is his vow the word of god is a definition of how far the terms and conditions it's important that we know the word there's no place in scripture where the bible records that satan comes to steal prayer no he can stop prayer but he cannot steal prayer but if that seed is sown the parable of the sower the seed is the word of God and Satan cometh immediately not a demon he comes himself and he steals the word are we together very very important so we have to pay attention to the word right we began to show the sequence of spiritual growth last week how that it matters for us to understand the sequence of spiritual growth when a believer encounters new birth what next what is the next assignment listen there are many frustrated believers today because of the religion of following christ now take note of my choice of words the religion that means that there is no life and no power there is no intent and no goal why do i have to serve god are we together so when believers get born again there's no motivation for spiritual growth there is no motivation for increase at best their motivation may be a desire to be like their pastor meaning to go into ministry and this is not a very proper way of mentoring believers because the vicissitudes of life itself is they are distracting there are too many things in life to distract a believer you must be able to have a road map that guides if i get born again where do i go from here and why the average believer after responding come please after responding to an altar call honestly does not know what he should do again 
and he would have to subscribe to the ideology that is predominant within the territory where he got saved. Now, it looks very simple, but sometimes it can be very poisonous because it matters who talks to you about God and it matters what you are told. It matters the jurisdiction of the spiritual information that is supplied you. You can hate God because he was wrongly proposed. You can have imbalance in your spiritual life because some well-meaning but maybe ignorant person communicated a dimension of Christ in a lopsided way. And I told us again, and I've shared it here in this house, that how we grow matters, not just that we grow. Now think with me, for instance, that this gentleman just got born again. And the next topic he hears is love and marriage or financial prosperity. As powerful as it is, this guy is already in trouble. You see, there, there is a foundation of truth that he should be taught to make the issue of marriage or the issue of finance make sense. You see that now? If this guy has not been taught things like how to deal with the flesh, conformity to the image of the Christ, you know, how to rise beyond the vicissitudes of this life, that life of surrender, the prosperity is going to destroy this man. He will have the money because the principles work, but it will be at the expense of his soul. But the Bible says to prosper even as your soul prospers that means while you are prospering in other areas there has to be a check if you find out your soul is not prospering then you need to vet the system you are following if it's god's system you will prosper even as your soul prospers hallelujah when a believer gets born again this is the sequence or gets saved the next assignment of this believer is to be introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit remember jesus from john 15 john 16 in fact john 14 he began to talk about the ministry of the holy spirit that he was on his way going but the comforter the comforter whom the father will send in my name the gospel of john he began to introduce us to the holy spirit when he gets to chapter 16 he says i have many things to tell you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth so you see his assignment he will guide you into all truth that means you have to be guided truth is not on the ground and you just pick anywhere you have to be guided and that is in the office of the holy spirit as a distinct personality of the godhead to guide believers into all truth studying scripture without his guidance will lead to error imbalance and religion when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will show you the things that will come he will take up what is mine and give it to you are we together so this man is introduced to the ministry of the holy spirit and that encounter with the holy spirit first begins to open his organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit because the bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit number two the bible says that the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit he cannot receive because they are spiritually discerned are we together no matter how illiterate no matter how educated no matter how enlightened the moment you want to start that spirit work you have to subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit it is very very important if you do not subscribe to the ministry of the holy spirit you will you will walk with god purely based on intellect or based on the sociological context of life and all of these things are within the three-dimensional realm you will not be able to walk with the holy spirit and walk with god outside of this realm if you are together please say amen, amen. you can mechanically pick the bible and just begin to read like any atheist would just read to know about the christian faith but this book that you see has to be opened by the spirit Isaiah 29 and verse 11. It's a popular scripture here. Please give it to us. Isaiah 29 and verse 11. Read with me. It's projected. Please. One, two, read. And the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a 
book that is sealed which men deliver to one that is learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i cannot for it is what notice he didn't say it is closed it is sealed so you can open it and yet it is sealed next verse 12 and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned you see there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned come together and depend on the holy spirit this is very important because the ways of god are not the ways of man the methodologies of the kingdom sometimes are very ego stinging and insulting and until you become spiritual by your submitting to the holy spirit you will not be effective in your spirit work that was why naaman refused to wash he was angry he was embarrassed what kind of nonsense is this you brought me to embarrass me before a prophet the prophet did not even come out to even honor me is it that he's not aware that i am naaman the captain of the syrian army and the little lady encouraged him and said look um if he had told you to do another thing that is worse wouldn't you do it and the man humbled himself watched seven times in a very dirty river and then came out clean the ways of god alas master for it was missing they where they met with prophet elisha was very very straight narrow and they went to a greater place and while they were felling the trees the axe head fell you would expect that he would say who can swim so that we'll get it quickly but th that was already a hopeless situation scientifically he said where fell it and he took a stick threw it there and all of a sudden it came back the prophets began to eat and they shouted there's death in the pot and he took flour and sprinkled on it and said go ahead and eat it's been cleansed so the, the ways of God are a mystery. You have to understand a serpent comes and is buffeting the people and then a brazen serpent is lifted and they are told to just look at it. That whoever would not look at that serpent will be a victim of this one. Very, very powerful the ways of God. In God's economy, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. Are you seeing that now? Yes. So it takes being spiritual to really, really become a kingdom person. Now I began to share with us a few keys of the kingdom. We'll continue from there. Bless God. Number one, we looked at two last week. Number one was the concept of starting and prioritizing God. God only god first god above all and we explored the first three words of genesis or first four words of genesis 1 verse 1 i'm just doing a quick recap the bible says in genesis 1 verse 1 the first four words in the beginning god the beginning of everything must be god you do not ask god to come and patch your life you don't create your agenda create your plans and ask god to endorse it uh -uh, he's alpha omega not chronos omega god will not join you on the way he has to start are we together the bible does not call him chronos you don't call him to join the bandwagon of your will and your intentions he's alpha and omega and so we challenge ourselves that it's important that in this kingdom those who excel in this kingdom are those who must exalt god and his purposes above their desires above their intentions i want it this way but i acknowledge the fact that when god becomes above everything he protects he preserves two we spoke about the concept of success tying it with the law of the mind is very important that transformation is important in this kingdom in this kingdom we reign by light we reign by knowledge and that knowledge comes through transformation transformation through renewal and enlightenment take notes transformation happens through renewal and enlightenment renewal because there are old ideas that are there that may not be consistent with the ways of christ not everything in your mind is dangerous not everything in your mind is wrong 
but when you come to Christ the Holy Spirit Adam before his fall did not need renewal there was no need for renewal are we together the content in his mind and his understanding came directly from God Satan began to sow a seed of an information when Jesus came the Bible says um, God now came walking in the cool of the day Adam where art thou he said I heard thy voice but I hid because I was naked and he said who told you that means you have captured in your mind an information that did not come from me who told you who told you you have banked an information that is a seed that will grow are we together yes I hope you know that it is not only God that is the sower of the word it is not only Satan too sows remember in the parable of the wheat and the tears while men slept an enemy whoever that enemy is we know he's a farmer too because he sows so you can wake up with ideas you did not sleep with you can wake up with a harvest you did not remember sowing this is why transformation is powerful you look at a little child a little baby that looks very helpless in the hands of the mother and give the child one or two years the child will begin to pronounce words and you are wondering where it's coming from the baby will wind his or her hand and give the mother a slap and while the mother is crying the baby is laughing where did that come from certainly not from the womb but where for God's sake did that come from when has the child associated cry with joy are we together now so you see the kind of world that we live in he said in iniquity did my mother conceive me and then the way life works ensures that you remain um, a sinner in many ways the anger from the boss man I mean what he would do someone depriving you of your right and you know all of there are too many things within 24 hours that can destroy your understanding and then the Bible says in Romans chapter 12 1 and 2 I beseech thee brethren it's not a sermon it's a plea by the mercies of God that ye offer your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God he calls it your reasonable act of service verse 2 says and do not be conformed here it is do not be conformed to this world is the Greek word aeon the thinking pattern the system of operation that comes with this cosmos it says but be ye transformed how by the renewing of your mind and that by that you will be able to prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says to permit this mind to be in you which was also in Christ Jesus there was a mindset there was a thinking there was a body of conviction that made Jesus that flawless when he was on earth and he's saying allow the word let there means allow allow this body of beliefs allow these belief systems to also be enshrined in your understanding very important Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the Bible says having their understanding darkened then it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their mind when your understanding is darkened you are alienated from the potential the experience of the life of God it says through the ignorance that is in them transformation is very important there is almost no hope for an effective Christian life for any believer who ignores transformation and it's important because Africa is a very superstitious continent and in Nigeria where people who are very spiritual we would we would opt for wise sayings we will opt for a mix of trado African Christian approaches and would not settle down for the Word of God that is balanced truthful intelligent and transforming and this lopsidedness continues to produce the different qualities and the versions of Christians that we have and all those species will all be credited to the wisdom of God and it's not entirely so because there is a species of man that God cannot produce so when you see that kind of man you know that there was a corruption somewhere hallelujah praise the Lord the mind is very powerful 
I taught us about success, that true success in the kingdom is not something that we do. True success is what you attract by who you become. This is very powerful. There are so many people who continue to labor effortlessly to do things financially, spiritually. They want to do things. And there is a place of doing. There is a place of action. But action is only relevant when there is transformation. Success is what you attract by who you become. There is a level of transformation you get to that cannot allow a certain level of life to remain. It's impossible. Are we together? You cannot see Papa Ia Deboe, for instance, at a restaurant trying to buy rice and fish. His transformation does not allow him to have that kind of physical experience somebody will be called you would think it's because he's an elderly father of faith and you want to honor him but someone will stand up and say sir please go back home give me the honor of cooking to bring for you because his level of transformation rejects that physical result are you seeing how life works you don't say i hate poverty you are transformed to an extent that it becomes unfair to remain at that level so this is a mistake that believers continue to make. We try to do things and the things we do are higher than who we are. So the results continue to boomerang and bring us back to our levels, our mindsets. Success is a product of growth. It's more than doing things. God can tell you you're going to have 5,000 members, but you have to grow. It's more than just prophecy. There are ethics that you honor at every level of growth. And as you continue to transit, your results continue to change, to reflect the change in you. As you change, your clothes will change. As you change, your honor will change. As you change, your communication, your understanding, as it's changing, your relationships will change. Everything continues to change to reflect the changing person. You don't go and look for friends. You attract them by your growth. Are we together? You don't go around hand picking people. This is, the, this is the labor that God saved us from through transformation. Look how painful it is to go and select friends. How do you know the person will not change tomorrow? Allow the wisdom of God to select them. Your assignment is to grow. Does not deep call on to deep. When you grow, it begins to change. You cannot be wealthy and have poor friends. It's not about driving them. The law edits itself. It edits your possibilities. The moment there is that transition, your one room starts pushing you out without an intention to leave. You don't have to say, I must, I'm tired of this place. No, that's not wise. Grow. There is a level to which you grow. Your one room will push you out and the laws of God will back your exit. They remained in Egypt until Moses started bringing an information. Moses said, thus said the God of the Hebrews, your 430 years is exhausted. He didn't preach in one day. They kept hearing it while they started believing an exodus. There was, there was, no matter how bound they were, they were forced out of the place. Listen, it is frustrating. This is why a fake life, and oh dear, God bless and help our generation. Gathering physical things that are not reflected in your growth is a waste of time. It was authorized to live and it must live. There is no power in existence that can keep it with you. If I bless you with one million, your mind and your mind has not grown to that level. Your mind will interpret that one million as an attack and will fight its exit until it returns to the value that reflects your growth. It's not the issue of a spirit of, of, of uh, poverty. No. Satan is an opportunist. When he comes, he looks at a man's mental construction and uses it to build the strategy. Satan does not come to a man with a default strategy. His strategy is bespoke. It's made to your mindset. He will study your mindset from it, study your vulnerability, and carve out a strategy from it to bring you down. Satan cometh to me, but did not find anything. Satan comes to men and check, where is darkness? 
what gives me license what gives me access if your prayer life is on fire he can't attack your prayer life he will check your understanding of the word of god they are called rulers of darkness their domain is when there is ignorance are we together mm. the law of the mind when i learned this law it changed my life i knew that there had to be an easy way it's difficult to give god glory the way many people seek success your assignment is to grow when you grow from the intelligence of that growth you will be guided on what to do circumspectly the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise and it says the way you walk circumspectly is by applying time redemption strategies to your life redeem time you don't redeem time by refusing to walk in time time is automatic but that your life becomes circumspect when you take pathways that have time redemption advantages on them like following the path of favor like following the path of mercy like following the path of growth rather than seeking things when you seek things and get them in five years and then by the sixth year it leaves you that's time wastage but when you grow in two years and attract what stays for life that's time redemption so the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise say i'm growing the third spiritual law we're doing a revision thank you jesus the law of faith let's run to the laws and see how many we can touch the law of faith numbers chapter 23 and verse 19 please numbers 23 and verse 19 read with me it's projected one to read god is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent hath he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good the law of faith is a very powerful law the bible declares again and again in this kingdom i'm doing a revision that the just the believer one who has been justified in christ that you will live by faith the only assurance of your victory the only assurance of tomorrow the assurance of success is faith there is no earthly guarantee given to any man not by any uncle not by any auntie not by any certificate not by any platform the authorized platform of confidence for the believer is faith and this is the victory that overcome even by faith are we together what is faith faith is your conviction your conviction your conviction the name given to your conviction about God and the integrity of his person and the corresponding action that is taken to honor that conviction is called faith. Faith is not some laborious doctrine to explore in and out. It's as simple as that. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able. He has an ability and I know him. I'm persuaded. Are we together? Very important. Come, Sheun. Look at this, please. Now, if I look at Sheun now and I say, Sheun, I'm going to give you 1,000 naira. The first thing he's going to do is to draw from his understanding of who he thinks I am. My ability, my integrity, everything comes under pressure. At the instance of that word, he would have to verify whether, number one, I have the integrity and the willingness to give him a thousand naira. And then number two, whether I have the ability. I may have the willingness, the integrity, but not have the ability. So God allowed his word so we can vet him. He's not afraid of being vetted. God is saying, probe me, probe my integrity. I've worked with people under any condition through different dispensations. So that your conclusion on reading this is that God is not a man that he should lie. Are we together now? It's not something you just believe. He tells you, go through it. I allow you to have this, the chronicles of my integrity, so that you will believe me. When I say I can lift a man from a dunghill and sit him with princes, vet it. Did I not raise Joseph? Did I not raise Esther? Ah, it's powerful to believe God. 
There are people in ministry waiting for uncle or auntie to hold some ceremony and to assure them of some support system. Um, there will be one building that you'll be using and will be giving you 30,000. You will never rise. You will never move. Listen, if it is God, he will prove himself. Faith. Powerful. Find a believer that has faith and understands faith. Now, faith is not just blindly believing. Faith is conviction. Are we together? And that conviction comes through understanding. You have really understood God and his ways when you know where, how you contribute in terms of your partnership, your participation. Listen, Bible faith does not leave everything to God. There is always man's role in that equation. Please understand this. Bible faith will never allow God to just do everything. There is always the participation. And your participation is your believing God and then subscribing to the terms, the conditions that guarantee for that outcome. This is where many believers continue to miss it. Faith is more than just confession. Faith is more than just receiving, as important as they are. They are all equations in that, I mean, variables in that equation of faith. But Bible faith is not Bible faith until you find the condition allocated. Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day that the Lord thy God now watch this that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon thee and overtake you condition if thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord if thou shalt pay attention if you place value on the speakings of God, if you place value on his ways, his intelligence, his methodology, you will not be exalted above all nations just because you want to get there. Bible faith is not just confessing and now from this scripture, you say in the name of Jesus, I'm exalted above all nations. You are correct. But if you stop there, you will live a frustrated Christian life. There is a condition. While you speak, you release that word. But more than that, you have to go back and find out. So, what is the voice of God saying? What does it say? The voice of God, the logos of God, his thoughts, his intents. What does he say? Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do, do, do. Do, not just say, do all that is therein. It says, then shall thou make thy way prosperous and thou shall have good success. Good success. That means if I'm manifesting faith, then I must begin to understand the ways of God. The ways of God. Every time you are learning the laws of God, every time you are understanding the methodologies of the kingdom, you are in extension manifesting the law of faith. It's proof that you believe God. It's proof that you expect him to work. Are we together? Yes. The law of faith. You must believe in God. This life will come with so many things that will threaten you. When David stood before Goliath, he said, You come to me with your bows and your spears, but I come to you in the name of the Lord God of heaven, um, uh, the, 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 one, the, the one whom you have defied. He was speaking to Goliath. You have to stand and look at life and say, You may look like a mountain, but faith deflates mountains. It is true. It is true. Time will fail me, he says, to talk of Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. Listen, let me tell you the truth. There is nothing in your life and around your life that is new under the sun. It takes faith to subdue. Say in the name of Jesus. 
by the faith of God at work in me, I subdue every mountain. Don't approach challenges as if it was uniquely. No, no, no. There is nothing special about challenges. It is defeat that should be a surprise. Don't be embarrassed by the mountains that stand before you. Find out the provisions that make for your victory and engage it as though your life depends on it. And let the God of heaven, who is not a man that should lie, come and prove himself in your life. Every testimony here is faith. The equation of faith completed. Trust in God. Please don't doubt God. I know that we live in a sociological context that places very little reverence on God. We make it look like if you cannot see how one plus one is equal to two, one plus one plus God is any answer he says it should be. Any answer. By what standard will you say he failed? If a house is my own, I can choose that the back door becomes the main entrance. It's my house. So you don't say because I entered here, yes, this is my house. You are a visitor. Anywhere I show you that the door is, you follow there. Kai, this is God. God can decide to say, 2018 plus 2019 should be equal to 2001 to 2017's result together. This is God for you. Ten years in one. Hallelujah. The law of faith. Let's run. Faith is very important. We have dealt with the law of faith here. We have discussed the law of value as one of the kingdom mysteries for an effective Christian life. The law of value. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16, the Bible declares that the gift of a man will make room for him and bring him before great men. This is a very powerful scripture because it does not lie. Sincerely, let me tell you, this is one of the, I, I, I can't use the word, truest scriptures. But this scripture you see, please have a lot of regard for it. The gift of a man truly can make room for him. It didn't say we'll show him where his room is. Until then, there is no space for you. The gift will make room for you. Like a visitor comes to your house and there was no space. And because of your honor for that visitor, the children will come out to sleep in the parlor and you quickly make room. So where there was no space for you, that your gift can come and say, what is going on here? The table of greatness, where is my space? Sorry, there's no space. No, it will shift until it creates a chair for you and a throne. The gift of a man. The gift of a man can make room can take a man out of a life of mediocrity and pain and shame and bring you to a place of greatness. It's very important. Classic um, story is the story of Joseph. Genesis chapter 41, when you read 14 and then from 33 to 46. I don't want to go into it. Forgive me, I'm rushing because we're just, this is a revision series. I'm reminding you that these are the keys of the kingdom. These are the truths we engage. If you don't engage this, you will fail. I tell you sincerely. They are not opinions. They are not doctrinal perspectives. When Jesus came, he began to mentor the disciples in what we call the Beatitudes. Teaching them the ways of the kingdom. It's, it's important that we understand the methodologies of God. It's not, the discourse, it's not an invention of one man. Please understand this. Jeremiah 6, I believe, verse 16. Let's go there and then we'll return here. Jeremiah 6, 16. The Bible says to ask for the ancient part. It says, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old part. Wherein is the good way? It says, when you find it, walk therein and ye shall find what? Rest. Another word for rest is Sabbath. The Sabbath of a man comes. The Bible says labor to enter your rest. That labor is not a labor in the flesh. 
It's a labor of understanding, understanding, understanding that there is a belief system, there is a construction. When you hold the keys of the kingdom, they can bring you in experience to your Sabbath. So two people, all saved by God, can walk on earth commanding different dimensions of results. And the difference is not the love of God for them. For the same Lord is rich unto all. The difference is their understanding. Psalm 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, have I not said ye are gods? And all of you, not some of you, are children of the most high. Verse 7 says, but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So your destiny is not just left to God. How can I lie, Sharia? Whatever will be, will be. Those wise sayings are poisonous. Are we together? The law of value. Very, very powerful. You will continue to sweep the floor of life and destiny until your value bails you out to sit with kings your value decide who decides who pursues you it is true and who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward god designed life to operate based on a reward system there's no sentiments to it life operates based on a reward system that means that no matter how bad my background is no matter how bad it was there is a bailout system I can be valuable. I can find my way out of every nonsense in life. It has nothing to do with who likes you or who does not like you. It's a principle backed up by God's own integrity. When you discover and you develop problem-solving abilities, when you become fruitful, when you become productive, it's impossible to be ignored regardless of tribal affiliation regardless of sentiments regardless of age and gender the world does not have too many people who are valuable please understand this potentially we all are but in experience there are few people per territory you can you can do a random sampling there are few people per territory who are really valuable so it's impossible to be ignored it's like holding bright light in a very dark night. How could you be ignored? I show you what will take away mediocrity from your life. It's impossible to be ignored. You may ignore my background, that's all right. You may not like my persona, that's all right. But the value I carry, then anointed by God, developed and served with excellence, it's impossible to ignore it. And we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you. And I will never settle for less. I know there's more that's found in you. There is more. There is more than a weak and a mediocre life. There is more than a life of just getting married, having children, and managing the problems of life until death takes away your life. There is more than that. There is a life of meaning and glory and beauty. He has called us into glory and virtue. He has called many sons into glory. Where your life becomes an influence for his majesty. Your life becomes an inspiration to a generation. More than just food to eat. More than a little house here and there. I have one house, two cars, one estate, one business, a wife, my children, and that's it. That's a mediocre life. There's more than that. Are we together? The Bible says that you are the light of the world. Jesus is teaching here now. You are the light of the world, the salt of the earth. It says, if the salt has lost its savour, its saltiness, wherewith shall it be salted? It is for no good but to be trampled underfoot by men. It says, you are the light of the world. 
Then he says, a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. That's the word. You cannot ignore a believer who has refined his ability. And my brothers and my sisters, when the glory of God comes upon who you are and the works of your hands, your life becomes an epistle of unending wonder. One wonder connecting to another. When people think they have exhausted a dimension, here you come like the eagle. Another page. God does not select a few people to be great and a few people to follow and scrounge in mediocrity. No. It's a very poisonous proposition. He desires that all men, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 5 and verse 10, that we have all been made together unto our God, kings, or a kingdom of priests, kings and priests. And he said, we, not one person, we shall reign on earth. Please believe the word of God. It's not a scam. Believe the word of God. It may take time. And while that is happening, different people can argue about what they think or know about your life. But just allow the word of God take you like a lift. It will take you to a mountain that you will stand and wonder. And all you will see from your life is an effulgence of praise. It's called doxazo, the flaunting of a king's glory. Now, thanks be to God, he says, that causeth us always to triumph. Are we together? Yes. And Isaac looked at his son and blessed his son and he said that his smell was like the field that the Lord has blessed. A man's life can become a fragrance that is perceived by a generation. Value. Value. Don't say my family came from this. Nathaniel said about Jesus, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Jesus did not turn and say, ah, Nathaniel, so much. No, no, no. He was right. There was a history to it. Mm. But he said, Nathaniel, just because I did this now, you, have, ah, you will see greater things than this. That Nazarene that you laugh at, you will see something out of him. That rejected stone. Listen, there is an advantage being in Christ. There is an advantage that your tribe, there is, there is a limit to the advantage that being a Yoruba person gives you. Being an Igbo person gives you. Being a Northerner gives you. Being a Middle Belt, a, South, a Southerner. There is an advantage that being an American citizen, a British citizen, they all have their advantages, but they are still limited. Ah, but now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Do not underestimate the power and the potentials locked up in one who has been a benefactor of the grace of God. Now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear. Otherwise, people like us would not have a stake in life. But hallelujah. Ah. You may laugh at my background, but watch my future. You may laugh at yesterday, but not tomorrow. Between yesterday and tomorrow is the cross and the throne. I will not remain at the cross. Jesus died for only three days. He didn't die forever. Man should not remain at the cross forever. If you remain at the cross forever, it's a sign that death has swallowed you up. Are we together? Please shake off that mediocrity from your life. Don't, don't move around like a second class citizen and allow people with their pride in their limitation to bully you out of destiny. You don't have to be arrogant. You don't have to insult anybody. But please have a healthy confidence. You may laugh at me, but not the one with me. The Bible never said, as far as I'm concerned, I'm successful. It said, with God. Laugh at me if you don't, if I'm alone. Laugh at me because your prophecy will be right. But with God. Renard Bonke, I remember those, those times when he was preaching in just in his crusade. He said, even if you call him a big zero, the bigger the zero, God is the one that is added to the zero. So if I'm five zeros plus one, if I become six zeros plus one, if I become seven zeros, so the bigger the zero, the greater the value when he comes. Let me give you the New Living Translation of that. There is this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of power may be of God.
when God wanted to humble the fallen angels, he used clay to make man. You see, the fallen angels were not made from dust. Their material was light. And now God decided to make mud and put his image that they so died for to get in that earthen vessel. And they said, this is not fair. Even Lucifer that was a light bearer an effulgence of the light of God did not have the privilege to carry the image of the Christ. The Holy Spirit never came inside any one angel. Never came inside one cherubim. But he made clay and breathed upon that man the breath of life. Please don't just be motivated alone. Be angry. You know, we have these funny ways of looking at people in society. You are not beautiful. You are ugly. You don't speak English well. Don't worry. My result will correct any error in my English. Appa! Don't allow life defeat you like this cheaply. You know, and this is a world of arrogance. Even one minute to a man falling inside a pit, he will act as if he still has control. Let me tell you, the days that will come will reveal a dimension of the glory of the church. It will be impossible. The church will not just be some kind of fanatical people who are, who are close within a religious sect. No, the social economy will see the intelligence of God. Was it not prophesied by prophet Micah that in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above every other mountain and the nations will float with they will come and say come let us go to the house of god to the god of jacob for he will teach us his ways he says for from zion out of zion shall proceed the law not into zion out of zion say i'm valuable it's a revelation. Don't give yourself cheap to life. Just because culture, just because your past, just because your failures have concluded about you, shake that off and know that there is a way. Oh, rejoice not over me, my enemies. Mm -mm. While they were discussing the death of Jesus, he had resurrected and was on the throne. Please sit down. The law of valley. Be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored. The earth has too many people for you to be ignored. 7.2 billion is a lot of people. A territory can ignore you but not the entire earth. Hmm. We will all be great. And the greatest part is we will all know ourselves. It's true. You will not be great just by intention. There is a ladder that knowledge provides. One step after another, we will climb until the pride of man against the ways of God will be revealed through our manifestation. It will be very clear that any man that ignored God will pay the price generationally speaking. We want to correct a perception that has been gotten about God. God is not a nuisance to civilization. And being a child of God does not mean that you become a failure in life. Listen, you must understand this. It may take time. Agreed, your path may be unconventional. But watch the beauty and glory that comes out of you. Next law. We're discussing the spiritual laws and the mysteries that bring us to points of power there are mysteries in the kingdom these are the keys please understand this please understand this the next key that i want to teach us is what i call you know it the mystery of exemption huh. that there is a key allocated by which the saints can exempt themselves The first time we see exemption in scripture, officially, was when the angel of death was about to pass over the entire land of Goshen and even in Egypt. They were asked 
to bring a strategy and it was a strategy of the blood on their lintel are we together and that when the angel of death saw the blood he would pass over that is a revelation that everything should not meet you and destroy you passing over is a possibility in this kingdom the bible says a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side he said none shall come nigh thy dwelling but only with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked let me tell you the part of scripture you choose to believe is the part that works for you forget about your current result just focus on believing it Sometimes when you believe certain things, at the point of believing, your results will negate it, but just continue. Remember the things that are seen are temporal. It is the things that are unseen. Superimpose your possibilities. Your life. Don't sit down and say, now that I'm talking, am I not broke? Mm -mm. For our light afflictions, the Bible says, which is but for a moment. It says it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal, meaning a possibility exists for them to change. Exemption. Man can be exempted. And I've shared with us that there are three keys basically. Number one is the mystery of praise. That praise is a deep mystery that can exempt men. Praise. Praise. I'm just touching it. We're not going into all of the details. Praise. One of the, the, the mysteries of exemption. Requests that should not be granted are granted. It was a young lady who danced before Herod. Danced before Herod until a prophet's head went. He prophesied, but a lady danced until a king lost his mind and said, What do you want? And was willing to allow a small girl to ruin his kingdom. And she advised her wicked mother, who said the head of John the Baptist and the head of John the Baptist went there are things that should not happen that you can make happen and there are things that should happen that you can stop from happening praise when you praise God it's called perfected praise praise that is intentional Praise is a weapon of judgment. It's a weapon of warfare. Let the high praise of God be upon their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance upon their kings and to bind their nobles with the fetters of iron. It says that to execute upon them the judgment written, this inheritance, this blessing has the saints. Let me tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, when you take out time to praise God, you can praise tragedy out of your life. You can praise limitation out of your life. You've had many people's testimonies here. They love themselves and sing and dance like fools. The songs of Miriam, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He said the horse is and his rider. Not the horse alone. You are not safe if the rider is still alive. The horse is and his rider has been thrown into the sea. Cheap victories through praise. It was in the days of Jehoshaphat when three nations came together to throw them. And he said, look, this one is not, you find it in Second Chronicles chapter 20. There's no time to read everything. And they raised their voices and began to sing. You are good and your mercy endures forever. And there was fight in the camp of the enemy. They began to kill one another. And the last person helped kill his brother. Men were going for war and they went with gold and silver. And when the army came, they found prepared blessings. Please do not underestimate the power of praise with understanding. You can dance your way out of tears. You will look stupid until the results justify you. You can sing and shout. Praise is very powerful. It's not a psychological way to motivate yourself. No. 
Are we together? Praise. You exempt yourself through praise. You have to know this. I've also taught you that one of the ways that you can exempt yourself is through the mystery of sacrifice. Sacrifice is very powerful. Psalms 50 and verse 5. I'm just doing a quick recap. We have all these teachings. You can go and listen to them. Gather unto me my saints, the Bible declares, they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. By sacrifice. By sacrifice. There are covenants that you can enter not even knowing it's a covenant you entered. Sacrifice. The Bible says that Solomon sacrificed a thousand bond offerings and that night not the next day that same night the lord came to him and said solomon ask what he will and then he asked not for the life of his enemy but for wisdom to govern the people and he said you did not ask for the life of your enemy nor riches nor this because of that i will give you an understanding heart he said and with it i will give you riches i will give you wealth and honor and so on and so forth sacrifice is powerful unfortunately i know that it has been abused you know especially by women of god who try to manipulate people to just get a lot of money but just because something was was abused the word abuse comes from two words abnormal use that means when you take the use out of its its boundary of relevance just because something has been abused does not mean you throw away the baby and the bathwater. Sacrifice is powerful. You can sow your way out of realms. You can sow your way into realms. Sacrifice that is done with understanding, not manipulation, not coercion. As a testimony, one time when, when we started Koinonia, I think the, the first year or so, we're just about a year or so. I remember one time, the beginning of that year, the Lord gave an instruction to carry everything, literally everything, 0.00. .00. Carry everything and so. And I heard it, I knew it was God. I said, Lord, thank you for an opportunity for lifting. Not thank you for being a robber. God does not rob. As we carried that seed and sowed in seven days, seven days, God did a miracle that... It's only in heaven we all know what God did. But it's a, it's a mother of miracles to this ministry, even financially. Greed is your partnership with failure. When you are greedy, you have entered into an intentional alliance with failure and struggle. Please hear what I'm saying. This is true. Greed is a man's partnership with failure to keep that man in that realm. You can pray your way. You can give your way, sow your way, and then invoke the mercy of God, and so on and so forth. Let me talk about two more and we'll pray. Oh dear. But I hope you are getting these things. Because let me tell you, if you understand these principles that I show you, Your life will become an unending wonder. It's true. It's not a lie. They are not opinions. Hallelujah. The next law. Spiritual law. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny helpers. Destiny help us. These are some of the ways of the kingdom that you must learn passionately. The irrefutable ministry of destiny help us. Hmm. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. Please understand this. Everything on earth multiplies on the basis of relationships. 
We are relational beings. In fact, the faith work starts with a relationship. A relationship with Jesus in an experience that we know to be the new birth. Relationships matter in this life. Please listen. When you master relationships, you will tame life like a dog. I wish I had the time. But let's look at just one scripture. Second Samuel chapter 9. It's a long reading. I don't know if we can look at it. Second Samuel chapter 9. We'll start from verse 1. Destiny help us. There is, there is a teaching. And David said, ah, I answer amen for this for even myself. And David said, is there yet any that is left in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for whose sake? Not for his sake. For Jonathan, because you are related to Jonathan. I want to change your life. Next verse. And there was in the house of one Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And they went and called unto David. They called him unto David. And the king said unto him, Are thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is here. We're reading, please. Go ahead. And the king said, Is there not any in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And so on and so forth. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son. But this son is lame on his feet. Mm. He's a son, but he's a son that cannot help himself. Next verse. And the king said unto him, where is he? And he said, behold, he's in Laodiba and so on and so forth. Verse 5, let's hurry up. I just want us to get the, the central message. And the, and the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir and the son of Amiel from Laodiba. 6. Now when Mephibosheth, ah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he said, Behold thy servant. Seven. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will show thee kindness. Not the spirit of God. Men can show men kindness. A man can decide to use his influence and change your life. Please understand what I teach you. Every blessing comes from God through men to men. There is no blessing that comes from God to men. No, it comes from God through men to men. Every good thing lives from Satan through men to men or from men. For Jonathan, thy father's sake, and I will restore thee all the land of Saul, thy father. And thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? If he ate only one day, it will be painful. It's painful to enter some realms and go out. He says continually, continually, continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a what? A dead dog as I am. Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind There's no one like you yeah. None like you Water you turn say Water you turn into wine Open the eyes of the blind We're talking the God of heaven here. My God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Please sit down. A man is calling himself a dog. You should even be afraid of relating with such a man. But let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, when you find your destiny helper, not a man who decides to help you. Sit down. I will tell you who they are. Glorious is the destiny of the man when you find a man that was anointed and authorized to help you. Destiny helpers are not well-wishers. No. 
destiny helpers are not kind people. No, it's a ministry to you. It's God's time redemption system. I told you there are systems of advantage in this kingdom. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Verse 9, we're reading to 11. Let's hurry up, please. And the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said to him, please listen. I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained unto Saul and to his house. Restoration by one encounter. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Prophesy. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Now listen. And thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son shall eat bread all way at my table. And now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Didn't the king see his sons? Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. Yet they sent him, although he had sons, they said, go and run an errand for a boy who a midwife threw by mistake and crippled his destiny. Rejoice not over me, my enemies. There is a system of advantage. I may be limited, but in this kingdom there are keys. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto me. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto me. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto me. Listen. And then Ziba. Why will the Bible tell us Ziba had 15 sons? That means when a man is not your destiny helper, he will watch you like this and you see him. Every destiny helper has his own children. He has his own relatives. He did not even say, Ziba, take two of your sons. Let me help you while I help this guy. Every disadvantage, you don't take blemish before the king. Did you not read Malachi? You call me a king. Why do you bring me animals with blemish? The guy already called himself a dog. The king said, it doesn't matter. May you find the man anointed by God to lift you. Please hear what I'm saying. You can be born again and not leave the potentials that are encapsulated in this kingdom. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray. Mephibosheth. There are four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run it quickly in two minutes. There is a teaching, please get it. Number one, they are called divine connectors. Divine connectors don't have the power to help you, but they know who can help you. An example is the little slave girl. The Bible talks about Naaman, the captain of the Syrian army. He said he was a valiant man in his battles, but he was leprous. As valiant as he was, he could not meet Elijah. But there was a little girl who connected him. The young man cannot give you a job. But he knows which job is, is, on, is on application right now. The young man does not have the power to write you a check. But he knows how to connect you to someone who honors your vision. Divine connectors. Number two. The second kind of destiny helpers are called men of access. These ones are people who have influence. They are gatekeepers of industries. Who, who speaks at the gates about you matters. See, let me tell you, there is this foolishness among believers 
that they believe that just because God let me tell you this sincerely please hear me not every enemy is castable just think about what I'm saying there are enemies that are gatekeepers and their position is honored even by God you cannot cast them when God wants you to pass through that gate he will make them to show you favor the Bible says when a man's ways pleases the Lord he makes even his enemies there are gatekeepers a Cyrus can reject you he does not honor God but you are rejected how do you cast Caesar how do you cast Herod so he granted favor and when Joseph of Arimathea requested for the body of Jesus they allowed it not every man you can just pray and say let him leave that place let me tell you there are men that would not go there because their stewardship is a covenant they are not even there because of what they did they are sitting on another covenant that God's integrity must protect although they are unbelievers Ishmael today remains there to the heart of God in spite of his pungency against the gospel because he will always remember Abraham my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that is gone from my mouth in a desert land yet they are prosperous because God is a covenant keeping God so when you see people sitting down and you are praying and praying and they are not leaving find out their grandfather who loved God arranged something for them with God forget that they are rebelling while they are there their children will pay for it but for that time no your prayer meets a covenant that God has vowed to honor and you'll find out that you are praying spiritual prayers that are not producing results what I tell you is called spiritual intelligence it's true these are the kinds that you need favor influence did you not notice that God did not have to remove Pharaoh for Joseph he just caused Pharaoh to love Joseph notice that all through the lifetime of that Pharaoh they were allowed to serve their God and Pharaoh gave him he, he, the wife of the priest Potiphar, the priest of On as a wife to a man who's another God somewhere and he still gave him as a wife and in, in the land of Goshen the people can't it was when there was another Pharaoh who knew not Joseph that was when their oppression started so even in a land that does not seem to favor you governmentally you can reign favor men of access please don't reject men of access in your life it's not simplicity you will be punished again and again for that ignorance hallelujah number three the third category of destiny helpers are called gifted people gifted people these are people who are an asset to you every pastor needs these people every father needs these people they are the people that make work easy they are the errands and the horse you need gifted people they must be sent by God you will see a big church of 5,000 people and only one person is trying to learn how to play the keyboard you need to cry for gifted people are we together gifted people I have seen personally precious great anointed men and women of God but no support systems no gifted people there are families that don't have gifted people every house help is a thief every house help is a robber everybody is a, I mean you there has to be a skilled person gifted people I'm saying this so that when you are praying you can ask in prayer Lord send me gifted people make my life easy you have a business because of scarcity you, you hire a receptionist who continues to drive good people from your life hello is this so, 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 so person's office why are you here please if you are don't you know who gave you the address and person, I'm sorry and he leaves you are inside there doing CEO and your company is failing you need to pray for gifted people no man exists as an island gifted I pray this prayer all the time and I tell you sincerely and I, 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 I stand broken before God to appreciate him for giving me and giving this ministry the treasure of gifted people the workers in this ministry are exceptionally gifted people 
has saved me the stress of any other thing I focus on the ministry of prayer and the word please you need gifted people in your life otherwise life will be hard you can't do everything by yourself hallelujah gifted people the day your wife is giving birth that's the day the quack doctor is on duty you, you see what is happening the day your child is sick that's the day the serious doctor wants to give an injection and he experiments around your child to make him like Mephibosheth the midwife that threw Mephibosheth she was called a midwife what happened that she threw the guy down do you know the kind of fall you have to throw a child to break the legs and scatter the child Lord send me gifted people in the name of Jesus Christ and the last of all very quickly they are called burden bearers the last of the destiny helpers are called burden bearers during the your down times in life you must pray that God will send you people who don't love you because of the throne they love you because of who you are the flat tree of success can kill people can clap when there is a crown on your head but when you are at the cross you will need burden bearers and Jesus was on his way to Golgotha the Bible records and he was he was bleeding and that he was losing blood and was about to die he would have died there and if he died yet there would be problem because he needed to die a cause not just to die a man cause is the man that hangs upon the tree he says that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so if he died on the way that's not redemption that's obituary and then they called on a burden bearer called Simon of Cyrene the black man the nigger and he the guy gladly carried the cross let me tell you i pray that you will find people in your life that even when you stand like david in the cave of adulam the bible says mighty men they came to david they saw him hiding and they said you will become our king it's not everybody that is looking for results there are people who will stay with you as the landlord is driving you they will stand there and say no i will not run away men are selfish by design please every leader hear me you need to trust God for the grace for real burden bearers men and women who can cry with you they can say Hosanna but when you're on your way to the cross you will only see Mary and John there burden bearers there are men of God when they are, we start building project everybody just runs away when the building is completed, people come and dance again to acknowledge God. Burden bearers. Even the disciples ran away. But there was a woman who said, let me risk my life. I'm on my way to the tomb to go and purify his body. I hope you know that was why she went. She carried to go and purify his body. What if she died on the way? A burden bearer will be like roof. To Naomi your God will be my God and your people will be my people many people when they're in their dark days they never find helpers who will not celebrate with you when things are going well but you must pray for burden bearers there is an attack on the church and someone is standing to say pastor I love you I will stand by you all the way are we together I'm brother still from your house and someone comes and says is there food for the next two weeks i will be cooking for you don't tell anybody i have to stay here i hear you want to buy back another car please my salary of two months is yours don't say there are no people like that there are real burden bearers it takes prayer and spiritual understanding listen these are the forces that work in the life of others and while you are seeing these things happen there are burden bearers again i thank god for the privilege you know many men of god for many men of god their greatest fear in fact many successful people their greatest fear is whether they will have people stand by them when things go bad 
I tell you, God has taken that fear out of my life. God has given me not only trusted people, not only gifted people, not everybody, old, but there are people God has put in my life that I know if they put a gun today, they will stand and take that bullet. Lord, you took my pain away and then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. That's why I will lift up my voice. Taking the pain and the sorrow away, you've given me peace on the night. There's no need to cry, cause you're always with me. You're my father, my everything. Listen, you must pray to God and cry that there be burden bearers will look at your wound. Listen. Listen, please sit down. We'll pray shortly. Listen, the Bible talks, Jesus himself was teaching and Jesus spoke about a man. And robbers were laid that man. Are we together? And he was on the, a priest came and a priest saw him and left going to church. A Pharisee came and left him. But there was a man called Good Samaritan. No name. Good Samaritan. He was identified by where he was coming from, his territory, and his character. Good Samaritan. And the man sat down. He bandaged this man, took him to a private inn to keep him, and said, I will take care of him. I'm about to go and do something. When I come back, whatever the cost is, that's a burden bearer. That's not an advisor. There are people who will come and see your child your daughter, your son, and look at things, work and say, ah, what is this? You mean he has been writing Wayek for five years? I will conduct a personal tutorial. When you see a burden bearer, you will think they charm them. They will carry your own load on their own head. You are planning for marriage and you find a burden bearer, you have entered the Sabbath. The person may not be a millionaire, he will be collecting 100,000 and depositing 60,000. Say, this is my contribution. There are real burden bearers. Not everyone on earth is wicked. You have just been meeting wicked people because you have been allowing life choose for you. You select your possibilities in prayer. This ministry, by the grace of God, has been privileged to have burden bearers. Men and women who are raised by the Spirit financial burden bearers credibility burden bearers there are people today across several nations of the world some of them are listening to me right now they have taken it as a mandate but i've never met them taking it as a mandate to ensure that the teachings that come from this ministry get to the ends of the earth there are all kinds of social media platforms that is all they do as if god did not call them themselves burden bearers It is painful to be alone. It is painful to be alone. There are many parents today who have raised all kinds of children. They had just five or six of their own children, but they raised up to 50 children of other people. And these people in old age will be in the hospital. Are we together now? Looking for one million for a treatment. And all those 40 people they raised, not one person can stand up to be responsible to say no i remember history i will never allow mama die like this some of them will have private hospitals some of them will have schools you need a burden bearer in your life a burden bearer in your life i've had the privilege by the grace of god in my own capacity to be a burden bearer to certain people and i'm happy doing it 
a burden bearer will go all out to turn your cry into weeping. That's his assignment. To insist till you laugh. Why are you about to go away? So I'm in 200 level. My father just died. My mother just died. They don't sit down and say, are we from the same village? That's not a burden bearer. Is your what was your father? Did he know my father? I stand and I say this. Come. Every semester, receive this school fees. For, give me your account number. I will be putting 10,000 10, until you graduate. And when you are about to graduate, let me know so that I will ensure that you have a job. Now, do you have a job? You are doing well? Sir, this is the wife I want to marry. Oh, really? Do you have an auditorium? We are trusting God because how much do you have? 100,000. Take 1 million. Go and pay for an auditorium. That's a burden bearer. There are churches that have had the privilege of boarding bearers. That's why they don't announce we have a project of, you know, God designed men to be boarding bearers. This crying on stage for money every week. No. A real boarding bearer will sit down and find needs. Why is this pastor's shoe removing? That shoe, would the pastor would never wear that shoe again. Had this shoe, no, no, it was embarrassing. Next time you go and buy, uh, uh, we notice that this child was crying and nobody could buy Bobo. Next week, there's a carton of Bobo for children. That's a burden bearer. And may you be a burden bearer too because it, it is wicked for you to want a burden bearer in your life and not want to be that for another. You have to sow that seed of being a burden bearer. May your wife be your burden bearer husband. And may your husband, may, may, what's the next one now? May your husband be a burden bearer wife. Be, because, listen, let me tell you, if your spouse is not a burden bearer, you will see what will happen the day you are in the hospital. You've seen these things happen. Some persons are in the hospital, some people are selling their property, hoping that they will die. And then they later come and leave. It's, it's when they are alive. They now find out that half of the estate had gone. In expectation that you would die. Is that a spouse? This is why we will continue by the spirit of God. Listen to me. Let me just digress for 10 seconds. This is why we will continue to guide people. You know, sometimes people make very, very poor marital choices carelessly these are the things to think about father is this person a burden bearer not for now for the days that come there are women whose husbands are confined on the wheelchair and you will see them celebrating their birthday 60 years with the man he can't talk he can't walk yet she's laughing they say say something about your husband say even if we return in this life i want him to still be my husband that's a burden bearer my generation hear me open your eyes and your spirit and your understanding and not make a catastrophic mistake that would destroy your life burden bearers In my life, I have seen this. There are men of God who have taken it upon themselves to ensure that every platform that can afford me the opportunity to teach the ways of the kingdom is there. I am amazed at the invitations that continue to come from around the world. And you will hear that one pastor went and he took his time and sat and said, look, this and that and that and burden bearers. The Lord gave the word. He said, great is the company of them that published it. If you don't have a burden bearer, you will pay for everything. The one who will help you drive your car, you will pay. The one who will help you cook, you will pay. The one who will help your child to not cry in church, you will pay. Because they are not burden bearers. Naomi told Ruth, you can go. I'm an old woman. Don't worry. At least my sons are dead. I can't leave you. Please just go. Live your life. Leave this old woman. And Ruth said, no way. No way. Mama, I'm not going anywhere. That means even if my future is ruined, let it be at the instance 
of our relationship. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Our time is gone. Can you spare me five minutes to talk on the law of honor? Will I end without teaching this? As you are agreeing to give me five minutes, it also means you are agreeing that if you don't have a legitimate reason to see me, you will go home after the grace. Making my 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 sit down this spiritual mystery second only to the law of encounter is the greatest truth I have found the law of honor the mystery behind the sudden rising of people like a charm a man just evaporates and you don't see him again and the only place you find him is above. Honor. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please listen. Five minutes and we're done. Honor is the discerning. Honor is the celebrating. And then if need be, honor is the rewarding of a man for their uniqueness and their usefulness the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man please help him up, for their uniqueness honor is the number one reason for the sudden rise of people please if you can i recommend that you listen to my teaching that I did at the King's Court RCCG the King's Court listen to it I spoke on the book of Esther the book of Esther starts in a very interesting way please lend me five minutes we're still at that the Bible starts by flaunting the glory of a man a king called Ahasuerus the Bible says that he was a king over 127 provinces to tell us the extent of his his might and then the bible tells us about a woman called vashti are we together so the next scene starts with the dishonor of a woman the king calls for vashti to come to come and you know show herself as it was in ancient customs before his friends and vashti refused when she refused, the king, being a very good man, he kept quiet with the issue. But then the advisors of the king said, uh, 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 uh. This woman is in a position where she's a model to every woman. If you permit this dishonor, our wives and our women will start the same thing too. Do something about it. And Vashti is banished. Are we together? That means everything was in place in a palace. The throne is still there. The treasures are still there, but dishonor is about to divide the kingdom into two. Everything still in place. Intelligence is there. The security there. Her man is there. But one woman's dishonor is about to bring conflict and tear down 127 provinces. And then the king dismisses the wife. There is no record of Vashti saying sorry. There is no record of Vashti saying an audience with the king. I apologize. No. To hell with your palace. And she leaves. Scene 3. A call is made for all of the young virgins around the territory. And then in a place called Shushan. Are we together now? 
the little niece of a gatekeeper called Mordecai is fetched and brought before the king. Honor. She honored the man and she came. Honor and favor works peri pursue. There may not be time to talk about favor, but if you, if you, if you practice honor automatically, you will find favor. Favor is the reward for honor. Are we together? So when she came there, the Bible says in Esther chapter 2, please give us verse 15 and then we'll go to verse 17, that there was a grace for favor that was upon her. Now when the turn of Esther came and so on and so forth, she went to Haggai, required from him the last sentence, and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Favor is a grace that works with sight. When the, when the grace for favor is upon you, only a blind man will ignore blessing you. Provided there is a man that has the eye that can see, they are compelled to bless you. Verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women. She was not alone, but the king loved Esther. And she obtained grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins. So other virgins obtained favor too, but her surpassed them. So that he set a royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Are we together? And then when you read on, you will find out that a lot began to happen. And she declared a fast because of the threat of her man, his plot to destroy the people of God. And she went to the king and he lifted the golden censer, the scepter, and invited and said, what should I do? A wise woman, look at honor. Honor is a weapon. In that, in the book of Esther, there is no priest. In the book of Esther, there is no prophet. In the book of Esther, there is no apostle. In the book of Esther, there is no war. There is only a woman. But she defeated everybody with a tool and a weapon called honor. She honored her man to his grave. Honor is a weapon. It not only lifts, it can kill. A wise, a foolish woman would have told the king, and said, King, her man wants to destroy us. Will you watch your beautiful bride go? See that? But a wise woman, when he gave her an opportunity, her honor, she discerned his mood and she said, Oh, king, I want to give you what the first wife didn't give you. It was her not honoring you that took her out of the place. Grant me the opportunity to present a banquet. And the king said, Finally. I find a woman who understands that with all humility, I am king over 127 provinces. Talk about my province first before my request. Don't, before your, don't come before me and request. Talk about the province. Don't ignore the achievement. It's a formula for attracting the attention of great men. Don't come before a great man and say, I'm broke. No. Are you not aware his company is doing well? You start like Esther. The province and the palace and his interest, then your needs come later. So when you go to this king called your father, when you start, it is hallowed be your name. Then thy kingdom come. Then your will, O king, be done on earth. Then when you are done, then give us this day our daily. It's a formula. The king's interest first before your needs. So Esther prepares a banquet. And then notice, she also requested, please let her man also come. When you fight a great man's friend too soon, even if it's your enemy, you will pay for it. Friendship is not built in one day. You will not fight it emotionally. Her man had done many good things for the king. For one woman's plea to make him destroy the man. No. She prepared the banquet. The king liked it. He said, do it again. He said, with all pleasure, my king. Honor. Remember, somebody is dying, no? But honor is the one killing the person. And then another banquet is prepared. And then the Bible says, 
she prepared a feast called the feast of wine that was where the whole thing came the feast of wine when the king drank wine and was happy he now said okay what is it and he said oh king i have a plea say it wine you wait until wine comes There is one who is threatening your queen and threatening your people. Who is that? That Haman. Look at a wise king. He didn't comment. He stood up and went to his garden. Went around his lounge and was just thinking. And while he was thinking, you see, but when, when it's time up for your enemy, anything will be a problem. The man went to the, king, the queen to kneel down. You know how you kneel down and just say, kill me here. The king now, ah! You are even trying to rape my wife on top. That's the end of it. Couldn't he beg from a distance? He now came and knelt down close to the queen. It, it's just doom. And listen, the moment that happened, watch this. Haman went back to his wife. Before that time, he went back to the wife and complained about what happened. And the wife said, who is this person? He said, Esther. He said, a Jew, you are finished. You are fighting a covenant, not a woman. You are finished. Her man, didn't you select who to fight? Not everybody is fightable. You went to go and fight a covenant. And that was the end of it. Her man is hung on that same gallow. Mordecai occupies her man's position. Esther occupies Vashti's position. So who said God cannot replace men? Who said God cannot lift? Hallelujah. If God has changed SS to AA and you are here seated with SS, is, is it such a big deal? Is it such a big deal? Or a job beyond your wildest imagination? So pay attention. An encounter with the word of God is the starting point of any miracle. And now I, I will explain to you. When we talk of an encounter with the word of God, we are not just saying you read your Bible because you've been reading it for a long time. We are not just talking of um, reading your Bible and, and looking at it. Wow, I found this. No. An encounter means something happens to you. There is a light that leaves that word. The ministry of the word of God is the first way out of any predicament in life. Please get me. The ministry of the word of God. There are some of us here right now who are trusting God for jobs. And I know that if all of a sudden I announce now, and I say our daddy prof is in this place. There are some of our, our fathers scattered around. Great influential men. Our fathers, our mothers. People who with one call can give you a job. I say all those who want jobs. Come and stand here. You greet daddy. Many of you will already be jumping. You say I God bless Koinonia. But, but do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? That I told you about the Illuminati. And the secret societies right by the privileged position of being called into an apostolic ministry it affords me the opportunity to study other religions and study a lot of false activities of darkness not necessarily to pervert my faith but so that i can bring the body of christ into accuracy look up please don't let any man fool you i was teaching someone today i think it was pastor femi listen every one successful person who has been empowered by the devil please listen to me everybody who has been empowered by the devil had an encounter with something that represented him are you getting my point i shared with you about the 2300 ancient manuscript that they found that it had magical powers upon it that if you only took that book and just read the title alone, fortunes will begin to follow you. There are people on earth today with those evidences. 
those secret societies recruit people they select people specially every year and it's by divination they select them so when they select you they get across to you you will not know how but they will call you they'll say you have hereby been invited your life is about to change they don't ask you whether you believe them or not they give you access to read some of those materials you step out immediately and you will see calls coming alerts coming opportunities look at me if you ever think prosperity is just about job or business you are joking there is a spiritual agency that makes things work in the natural are you getting what i'm saying this this is what this is what i've been crying about for years that the body of christ get it's not just about physical things there is a spiritual factor that makes things work. Is somebody learning something? An encounter with the word releases something. People just read a book, right? And something comes upon them they cannot explain. All of a sudden they come out and you are drawn to withdraw money and give them. Just like that. All of a sudden you stand up and begin to advocate their case. What, what sort of life is that? Look. They that know their God. They are the ones who will be strong. It's not about age. Listen. It, it's, not, it's not even entirely just about education. And I have a great deal for academia and, and all of that. But let me tell you. There is a reality that predates our existence. And if you do not know it, you will be a victim in this life. Psalm 82 from verse 5. The Bible says, they know not, neither will they understand. I have spent my life studying the laws of the spirit. I have literally committed my life to explore these ancient mysteries. What was the secret of ancient men? What made them mighty? What made them great? And I found out that every mighty man, then and now stands upon a spiritual advantage there is a pedestal in the spirit that sponsors their audacity is someone hearing what i'm saying you don't just tell somebody be healed and he gets healed brothers and sisters human beings are not idiots are you hearing what i'm saying i can't just look at this lady and say your story will change and then it changes come I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. See, this is the dynamics of miracles. I'm explaining to you the inner workings of the miraculous. It happens because all that you see is not all that there is. This realm is a three-dimensional realm, physics tells us, and is limited. The realm of the spirit has other dimensions meaning there are other possibilities beyond the scope of our intellect are you getting what i'm saying yes this is the realm of wisdom that kings reign by he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice he said with me are riches wealth and honor yea durable riches and righteousness tonight is not just for you to receive a miracle but to empower you that when you make a statement, there is an understanding that forces that statement to come to pass. Hallelujah. When you talk to people about finances, the first idea that comes to their mind is business. Is that not true? What business? Okay, real estate. Okay, stocks. Okay, this and that. I've said it again and again. Again and again that i don't care what business you do or what job you are having you will struggle forever until there is a spiritual factor that is at work are you getting me yes the bible says you have an unction from the holy one he said that unction can teach you isaiah 48 from verse 17 he says i am the lord thy god that teacher thee to profit 
and lead you in the way that you should go. There is an anointing. This hit and run trial and error life must end tonight. We can walk circumspectly on the strength. Listen, you can be 70 years old and have an error about life for that long. Are you getting me? A whole nation can be wrong. Our society, we transfer knowledge upon the strength of what we know or what we have been told. When man ran away from God, he said, Adam, where are thou? Genesis 3. He says, the Lord had the talking spirit, the voice of God walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where are thou? He said, I heard thy voice, but I hid because I was naked. He said, who told you? Meaning your life is a summation of the informations you have gotten and you have believed. But could it be that what you have held as truth all your life may not necessarily be accurate taught by well-meaning people there is the life of the kingdom and there is the life of this world system cosmos we are not the same it says you are in the world but you are not of the world there is a plane of reality you must function for hallelujah So number one, an encounter with the word. You need an encounter with the word. The word of God does three things among many other things. Please write. Number one, the word of God shows you the basis upon which you will receive any promise. The word of God shows you the basis. The realm of the spirit is a legal realm. Everybody say legal realm. So, you don't just, you can play crooks in the earth realm here, but not in the realm of the spirit. Everything is done legally and legitimately. If you ever see anything manifest itself, certain laws were applied. Praise the Lord. So, the word of God shows you the basis. Remember in our, our series, uh, the teaching, Give Me This Mountain. I teach about the spiritual dimension of life. That there are gates on every mountain. Everybody say there are gates on every mountain. When you get to that mountain of breakthrough, there are gates. It will not just open because you are a Christian. When Jesus in Psalm 24 was about to come out from the grave, the Bible says there were gates. The psalmist saw it. He said, lift up your head, O ye gates. And be lifted, O ye ancient doors. Did they open? No, sir. They asked a question. Who is this king of glory? Give us the basis of your audacity. Upon what are you standing? And he says, he is the Lord, strong and mighty. The one who just defeated darkness. And the gates opened. So when you stand to receive the miracle, Oh God, change my story from SS to AA. There will be a question in the spirit. Upon what strength? That's the parable that Jesus was giving. The parable, right, of two men who built houses. One upon sand, the other upon a rock. Two houses were built, but what supported them became the distinguishing factor. Praise the Lord. The basis. It's important for you to know the basis. Let me tell you very straight and uh, in, a, in a way that does not require any confusion. Everybody writes, the finished work of Christ. This is the basis. This is the reason. It is the one master factor. The finished work of Christ. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. Many of us need to meditate on what he really did for us. Do you know that it is on the strength of what happened on the cross? The way, access, the veil has been torn and it's given us access. Access. Revelations 5. Revelations 5. Verse 9. Very quickly, please let's hurry up so that we can do much tonight. Revelations 5. And they sang a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. It says, For thou wast slain and you have redeemed us unto God. How? By thy blood. 
that's the basis the substitutionary work of christ i told you you can get our teaching the speaking blood i told you blood is a key in the spirit is that true blood is a key in the spirit everybody's blood can open certain doors but not every door that's why when you go to a herbalist he will he will calculate by divination and tell you the kind of blood that will open the gate you want so the blood of jesus is the greatest because it is the master key there is no door that it cannot open it says out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation verse 10 it says and has made us unto our god kings and priests and as a result we shall reign everybody say dominion he has given us access to dominion access to dominion praise the lord so when you study the word of god it gives you the basis so when you stand and say i'm tired of this cancer or i'm tired of this barrenness it's been five years i've not been able to take in the realm of the spirit will ask you so upon what now do you believe you will take in and you tell them there is a key that has opened that door there is a key the blood of the eternal covenant hallelujah everybody say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance one more time say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance you're not just saying it after me you are confessing say the blood of jesus is my access to my inheritance hallelujah that's the reason why you get married that's the reason why the devil must leave tonight that's the reason why the genotype must change that's the reason why every prophetic word that comes upon you must produce result. That's the reason why as many of you standing outside, although you are far, but the ministry of that blood can still speak. Hallelujah. I believe in the power of the blood of Jesus. Not just because preachers said the blood is powerful. I have a revelation of the significance of the blood. Revelation is powerful. It produces true faith in your spirit so that you are not believing blindly you are believing upon the strength of an understanding so the blood of Jesus is your basis for receiving breakthroughs and when we stand up to pray and we begin to challenge the gates of hell you don't stand weak and you are wondering and say do you know nobody in my family has crossed this barrier you say well i couldn't cross it but that blood created a divide and i must walk past it look let me tell you the bible says let me show you something isaiah 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 let's look at isaiah isaiah help me holy spirit isaiah 41 verse 21 I saw this scripture in 2004 and it changed my life. Isaiah 41, 21. Everybody read. One to read. Look, God is speaking like a judge in a law court. Are you getting me? He said, produce your cause. He said, bring forth your strong reason. Give me a scriptural basis to bless you justify your qualification to step into a new level you don't say that just by jacking yourself you lift up the blood and say this is my basis this is my basis upon the strength of what your son did he has given me access to health he has given me access to the blessing of the Lord praise God Number two, an encounter with the word of God brings you to agree with God. It brings you to agree with God. We call that, listen, we call that alignment and transformation. Alignment and transformation. Somebody come. Please look for that scripture for me. With God, all things are possible. Right? Somebody come. Anybody? 
Watch this. An encounter with the word of God. Remember I told you in our teaching yes, um, last week, right? The reality of what? Spiritual laws. I told you that no man can activate any law by himself. Is that true? A spirit entity, either the Holy Spirit or another spirit must walk with you. So in the realm of the spirit, partnership is the order of things. You cannot do anything alone. Either a demon spirit or the spirit of God must assist you. So the Bible says, you are yet to find it. Matthew, Matthew 19, 26, media. Are you getting my point now? The problem with many people is that we are far apart. This is where God is standing. This is God's mindset right he says as far as the heavens are above the earth so are my thoughts my ways is that true so this is god standing and he's saying come and join me but she's standing here and saying lord i need you to help me and god is saying it's against the law you have to find come i supply grace you take advantage of that grace and come when we are together so the bible says with god come with God all things become possible so without God nothing becomes possible so that cancer with God becomes possible you see that are you getting my point that admission with God the Bible says with God so koinonia miracle service with God will produce result the, 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 this is the mystery this is the mystery of impact with God. Acts 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. The Bible says he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed. Why? For God was with. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them. This is the mystery. Divine assistance coming into God's realm. You no longer become an enemy of your own destiny. And we call that alignment and transformation. That's one of the major ministries of the word. So the word of God begins to advocate a superior mindset. Higher and greater than the ideology you've held on to. It may be cultural. It may be intellectual. Right? It may be societal. But when the word of God begins to judge you. It shows you the excellency of God's own mindset. And it's up to you to say, Lord, although this is all I believed my, all my life. For instance, there are people who are here with certain terminal diseases and they have been told. They've lived all their lives believing. They didn't even come for the miracle service for that specific case to be healed. They came for something else. Right? Because according to their mind, it has not yet become a possibility. That God can address that issue. But when he looked at the tomb where Lazarus had been buried, he said, Roll away the stone. Proof that I can raise Lazarus back by you going to open up that case that you have closed. Praise the Lord. I believe God. I'm a believer. I truly believe Him. Proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It says, lean not on your own understanding. The next verse says, in all your ways, not some. It didn't say, talk to him. It says, acknowledge him. You acknowledge a man by giving him preference. It says, and as a result, he will direct your path. Next verse says, be not wise in your own understanding. It says, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Hallelujah. Very important. So, with God, this lady may be weak unable to do anything but with God with God she may be broke suffering nothing is working but all of a sudden she comes and she finds out that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty she begins to learn the ways of God that he can open up the heavens that it is the blessing of the Lord not your business it is the blessing 
The blessing makes everything you do prosper. That's why it says whatsoever he doeth prospers. So it's not about what you are doing. It's about the spiritual factor that supports what you are doing. So, with God, with God, she suddenly becomes powerful. All of a sudden, doors of favor open up to her because she has chosen to leave her old mindset and come to God. Listen to me. Tonight, the first miracle you need to have is to give up on your ideologies and say, Lord, I'm tired because your life is a reflection of your ideologies. I don't care what the situation is. I told us last week that your environment will eventually become a reflection of what your belief system and your ideology he said let this mind philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 let this mind the word let there is permit permit this mind please i know that you came from kaduna state and kaduna state there may be a way you thought about in your village i know that you came from from the east and there is a way that they thought i know that you come from the west i know that you come from katsina tonight will you choose to become a citizen of the kingdom by adopting the ideologies of the king subscribe to a new government every government has an economic system every government has a political system every government has a welfare system if you've been evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more shall your heavenly father but that law is only operational for the sons of the kingdom hallelujah the word of god brings you into alignment listen when i begin to study the word of god or when she begins to study the word of god and she finds out that there is an ideology that she has that fights against the word of god you will be foolish to argue with the word of god the word of God predates our existence. It has been tried through dispensations. The word of God is a description of his character. His operation with man. And I told you that the efficacy of the word transcends Genesis 1. It's beyond that. It predates Genesis 1. I told you Genesis 1 is not the first creation. We've, we've settled that, right? Job 38. Those of you who are just coming, this is Koinonia. Get the series. Hallelujah. That there, there is a lot of creation. Genesis 1, uh, Isaiah 38 begins to give us how the foundation of the earth was created. Praise the Lord. The question I'm asking you is, I know you want God to bless you, but could it be that the devil that needs to go out today is not the one in your village? Is the one that has stayed in your mind like a stronghold. The Bible says... That the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To what? The pulling down of strongholds. Casting down every yazar, imagination, and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. And bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ. Praise the Lord. So, we have been given a poverty mentality as Africa. We have been taught that until you are 25 or 30, don't think about finances, don't think about blessing, don't think about empowerment. And you are told that you are too young to carry the power of God, or you are a lady, you shouldn't carry the power of God. These are the ideologies that cosmos markets to us, but you must refuse it. Say, I refuse. Shout it, I refuse. Mm. You must refuse it. You must refuse it. Who told you you were naked? Who told you you were naked? I honor the doctors, but do you know that there are many people who, ha who have several sicknesses, but it never affects them because they do not have a medical report to validate it. You went to check headache. They said, my brother, this thing is more than headache. Oh, I, you mean you would have died now? We have a lot of doctors here. Doctors, I love you. Praise the Lord. But now when you check and they tell you, huh, do you know that your liver is almost, in fact, you say, you, you mean it? Hi, from that time your liver starts paining you physically right and then the doctor tells you you have two weeks to live all of a sudden somebody says there's an opportunity god is lifting us they let him lift you there i'm dying
I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of God. See, listen. You don't see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. There is a spiritual agency for sight. You only see through these physical eyes. It's not what you see with. They are just the physical components that enable your true spiritual eye to see. And Paul prayed that that eyes be flooded with light. Praise the Lord. So we need alignment. That's why you can pray for people. Pray for them. Lay hands on them. Do whatever you want to do. Did you know that sometimes you finish praying and then the people walk right back because their mindset betrays what God wants to do in their lives. That's what happened to the nation of Israel. Right? Everything you have told Moses we will do oh, after two weeks. They say, Kai! A, a delegation comes and they say, Moses, we, we need an explanation. Go and bring Baal. Make something for us that we can see. This mysterious God who comes with smoke, we don't know this one. Please, make something we know. They limited God in the wilderness. A man's mindset can limit God as mighty as he is. I refuse to limit you. Number three, the word of God, an encounter with the word of God shows you your part of the deal. It shows you the part you have to play to commit God to a performance. Never forget this. There is a part that you have to play, brothers and sisters. Every promise in scripture requires a partnership on your own part. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1. It says, If thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day. Right? And then it talks about um, you being exalted above all the nations and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. If there is a condition. Isaiah 1.19 If ye be willing and obedient, you will eat the good of your the land not if ye be hungry and desperate if ye be what willing and obedient there is a condition there is a condition there are always conditions so an encounter with the word reveals to me my part of god's prosperity package lord you want to bless me what is my role right I want to step into levels of the anointing. The word of God shows me. is See, reading the word is like walking in your promised land. It says walk left and right. See everything as far as your eyes have seen. So, you read, studying the word of God is like touring your promised land. And you come back and say, Lord, as I read, I found this and that. And God says, alright, here's the condition. Everything is yours for it. You can enter a restaurant. Immediately you enter the restaurant, you see a lap of an agri chicken and you start smiling. But you came there with 100 naira. There is a condition. You want to be a possessor. You want to make that thing become a present reality. There is a price tag. Nobody stops you. There's no policeman to stop you. But you can watch it like a museum and salivate and watch. Right? And nothing happens. You may be 30 years. But a little baby will come with his father and he say, Mommy, I like this. And whatever he likes, keep giving it to him. The container did not refuse to open. Your part. I know you are laughing because I spoke about food, but get the revelation because the issue in your life is more than food. Praise God. Oh God, change my story. God says, come let me show you your part of the deal. He said, God, I don't want you. You have died for me. Mm -mm. Listen, listen, listen. Making the word of God work in your life, making that which he has done to work in your life will require a participation on your own part. Please understand this. Praise the Lord. Are we following? So these three things. Tonight, as you are seated here, there are some of us, the reason why certain levels of breakthrough have not come into our lives is because 
we have not been able to support our claims in prayer with a basis you have you have always every power challenging me you better leave because of what why should they leave do you know what brought them in the first place they were there before you were born. So I came to Koinonia. Every demon, I'm tired of you. And that's not what drives them. You, you don't, they don't go because you are tired. 38 years, that man was lying down at a pool. That wicked spirit did not say, Kai, 37, 38. Oh yeah, let me allow you. You have tried. You would have remained there forever. In five minutes. Five minutes. Meaning time does not change anything. Light is what changes things. It will change tomorrow. You are wasting your time arise and shine not because you are tired of sitting Isaiah 64 thy light is come hmm. are you getting blessed so there are some of us here what you need is to understand a revelation of what Jesus Christ has done you think the reason why you may get everything is because you are bold or because you are afraid it's not that there is a revelation the blood of Jesus for years, I heard Ren had Bonke talk about the blood of Jesus so much. He, he equated blood and fire. And I didn't, I couldn't quite get it until I found out that blood was a key in the spirit. That's why every religion has blood as part of their component. This is the one factor that every religion agrees upon. Blood. Hallelujah. And there are some of us here, the problem is our mindset. God wants to bless us. He wants to lift us. But there is a mindset. Oh, I'm a lady. Oh, I'm coming from so, so and so. I cannot even speak English. Oh, this and that and that and that. I've not even gotten admission. Oh, oh me, I just want a little this. Oh, I'm a that and that. Huh? Oh, God, I want you to bless me. But it must happen through NMPC. If you are Lord, it must happen through NMPC. They limited God. You're asking God for a cup and he wants to give you an ocean. Hallelujah. That's the problem with the body of Christ. Our faith is what I call auxiliary faith. Faith that is standing on something. Tied to the neck of your uncle. So every time you say, Lord bless me, what you mean is press that uncle's neck until he responds to me. Your faith is not really standing upon the word of God. Your faith, every time you say, Lord, I, 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 I know you are changing my story. What you are simply saying, oh Lord, I know my uncle will not sleep until my... No, no, no. Why don't you give him the option to bring the strategy? And you say, Lord, I don't care how it will be done. I may not see wind. I may not see rain. But one thing I know. Because let me tell you, your strategy is most of the time carnal. But his strategy becomes spiritual. When he gives you a strategy, it may look foolish. But that's the way he has chosen it. Right? Go around Jericho. That's the strategy. Oh, I'm already ahead of myself. The second way to receive a miracle or the second platform. Now, first is an encounter with the word of God. Second is the ministry of prayer. The ministry of prayer is part of the equation to receiving a miracle. There must be the ministry of prayer. It does two things. Number one, prayer challenges the forces of darkness fighting against the manifestation of the promise in your life. Ephesians 6 verse 12. The Bible clearly tells us that we are not alone in this world. We have strangers who are trying to escort us every day, every time. Wicked spirits stratified in different cadres. Right? So you are always not alone. The devil attempts to seek entrance into different dimensions of your life and given the opportunity he will wreck your life the goal to mock the testimony of god in your life praise the lord so there are giants on every mountain please don't let anybody fool you there are giants on every mountain if you get into a mountain and the door is already open somebody already killed the giants but there were giants there for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. The stratification of the demonic kingdom. So between you and your breakthrough, there are giants. It takes the ministry of prayer. Hallelujah. When you pray, you authorize heaven to look into your situation. Because God is not committed to step into your situation without your asking him to. Genesis 1.26 From the day he said, let them have dominion.
But God is supposed to know now, doesn't he love me? Well, it will not change. The bones kept staring at Ezekiel until something happened. Praise the Lord. You come for miracle service and you find out that as the word is coming like this, there are still people seated, oppressed of demons. Right? Some of these demons are hearing what I'm saying now. They are just shaking, but they are not going yet. Let's see if we will go. Must we really go? Yes. By the time we begin to pray, we activate the energy, the force. Right? It's a force of compliance. It brings everything to the obedience of Christ. So that's why you need to pray. You pray to command the forces of darkness that are stopping your access to bow. Number two, this is an even greater reason why we pray. Prayer reveals the exact and the unique strategy to bring the promise to manifestation. Please never forget this. When you pray in the place of prayer, God reveals to you his unique strategy for you. So you have walked through scripture and you have seen that God has told you that you are to walk in breakthrough. But now, the Bible may not give you the nitty gritty of what to do in your unique situation. Prayer. When you begin to pray, the Spirit of God begins to search the mind of God concerning your situation. And the Bible says how that he searches all things and he prays according to the will of God. So you begin to pray and then the Lord tells you, okay, now this is the strategy. You are going to meet Benga. Benga will introduce you to Femi. And Femi will introduce you to Prof. That's how the miracle will come. It is a strategy for only you. Somebody will do it and fail. Are you seeing why prayer is powerful? This is, this is, am I blessing you? In my opinion, I think this is already a miracle for somebody. I'm showing you the loopholes. Some of us have seen the promise. You have agreed with God. But the problem is the strategy. In ancient times, kings won war not on the strength of their army, but the dexterity of their strategy. Strategy, strategy, strategy. So Joshua stood still and God began to give him the strategy. He said, Joshua, this is how we we'll throw this wall down. Walk around seven times. Did you ever see that repeated in the Bible? Because it was a strategy. Right? He told Gideon, take the people by the riverside and let them take water. Study the way they take water. You will use it as a separation. Strategy. Somebody has come tonight to receive strategy. Lord, how do I complete this house? You calculated your salary. Based on your salary, it will take 10 years. And God says, I can show you a strategy. The Bible says, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. A wicked king slept in the night, dreamt and forgot it and was going to punish people for his forgetfulness. Right? And a man called Daniel. One of the greatest prayers that I've been praying in this season is Lord's strategy. It, it's all about strategy, I'm telling you. God will show you something that does not make sense, but is his strategy for you. Everyone will do it and fail, but it's what you will do. Hallelujah. So you look at that business and you are praying and God will say, uh -uh, my strategy for you is take that business out of where you are. Take it to another place. Isaac already knew he had the blessing upon him, but he needed a strategy. Right? That's why every time kings would fight, they would go and inquire, what is the strategy for this war? They will not use yesterday's strategy for today's war. They will fail woefully. And so they will go, should I pursue? And the Lord will say, this is how it will happen. Like in the days of Jehoshaphat. Put worshippers in front. Other times he said, walk around seven times. Other times he said, just be still. Get a stone and sit down and watch what I will do. Strategy. Question. The strategy you are using for your life now, who gave you? I saw another man do it, you see. He just went and started selling tomato. You see, it, it, God said he will bless you. But what drove you into it? I, I, a man must work. Don't stop those kind of demonic thinking. There must be a strategy. Oh Lord, change my story. I think I'll start selling shoes. Just like that. 
just like that the bible says as they began to pray the holy ghost said separate me paul and barnabas if they were to choose they would have carried somebody else right now when we begin to pray i am convinced that god will begin to reveal strategies for people hmm. strategies on how to make the rain work some of you listen students there are students here that all you need is one strategy there is a course everybody has told you this course and you are face to face with that Goliath. you've been running away but right you are there now you need a strategy hallelujah there are some of you maybe your project a supervisor may be difficult and god can give you a strategy the strategy may not necessarily be a direct revelation from the spirit it can be light a one scripture imprints in your spirit as you are praying oh god what do i do about this my supervisor suddenly a scripture comes the gift of a man makes room you quickly go and package wine not to bribe the man you are responding to a strategy ordinarily he would have thrown you out with your wine but because you are doing it as a strategy you will laugh and say why did you have to do that what is even your name you have been disturbing me it's a strategy you will see men do foolish things that don't make sense that's what god told us when when we wanted to start giving access to our messages i went to the lord and the lord told me he said make sure you do not sell any message keep the videos give out the mp3s that's the strategy right you may do it for your ministry and you will lose a lot of money the blessing god has tied for your ministry you would but but it is a strategy it's a strategy when i said lord what is the key to the publicity and the increase and the expansion of this ministry in terms of membership god gave me a strategy it's not a secret mark one two three you may apply it and it may not work for you but that's what the lord gave and this is the mystery behind what you see i like you as you're seated before we stand up to pray in one minute speak to the lord what is the strategy lord my family has been struggling over this issue for years Every time they want to build, there is no money. What is the strategy? Please take what I'm saying seriously. One strategy can change your situation. Not just a strategy you read from a book. One strategy. There is an easier way of doing it. That you have not seen it does not mean it's not there. Why we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are temporal. In 24 hours, by the strategy of the Spirit, He gave victory. Please pray. God has shown you your destiny helper, but He's not paying attention to you. One strategy will answer the question. Pray. God has shown you the business He wants you to do. But as it is, you try and try. You need strategy. It's not like you didn't hear God. The ministry of prayer. You have been reading and reading. You did well in 100 level. 200 level. By 300 level you started moving back. Because you need to change strategy. You need to go to his majesty. To show you. Strategy 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 please pray for your ministry sister you don't need all the money you think you need what you need is a strategy from the spirit believe me you have tried every idea you know you have tried everything they have told you why don't you cry before god come on now pray koinonia Reveal unto me the strategy. My family is suffering. There is witchcraft in my family. They have vowed. But my father will not listen. What is the strategy for the deliverance of my family? Everybody in my family is an unbeliever. But I've seen in visions and dreams that they will all be saved. Between the promise and the manifestation, what is the strategy? lord i've applied for job everywhere civil defense immigration everywhere 
What is the strategy? Hallelujah. Strategy. The last thing I'll talk about when we stand up, we're going to do a quick walk. Very, very quick walk. The last step towards the manifestation of a miracle is that you must take action. Take action. I want everybody to listen to me carefully because God is about to speak to us in a very definite way now. I hope you have been blessed so far. Take action. There are two enemies of action that are found from scripture. Number one, fear. Fear. Everybody say fear. Fear is a dangerous and wicked spirit. There are multi-millionaires sitting listening to me now. But fear has stopped them from taking action. There are many families you would have finished building your house since. Not just a bungalow that will kill you. There are people seated here. If you took the step God told you last year, you would have been feeding your family this year. Fear. Tonight, I'm showing you all the things. That there is work to do tonight. Are you getting my point? Everybody shout, I reject fear. Oh, fear does not respect age. Children fear. Adults fear. Great men fear. Macho men fear. Intelligent people fear. Right now, Africa is afraid. Nigeria is afraid. Many people are afraid. The dollar is crashing. Everybody is afraid. You don't know what to do. Right? There's fear everywhere. When the devil, when God tells you, get up and build a house. This year, that house must be built. And all you have is 100,000. And you calculate and you find out that the building will cost 7 million. And you are laughing. You say, God, don't disgrace me. Let the people in the village not say I'm stupid. Take action. Listen, the Bible says this sign shall follow, not go before. You will never see the hand of God till you stand up and move. This is somebody's, this is a word from God to someone. You have refused to move. Fear. You wrote jam nine times. You didn't get it. God is saying this time you will get it. You say, I'm not ready. I better go to the restaurant and eat food with that money. See that? Fear. Are we getting blessed? Let's look at two scriptures. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. Take it high, please. Second Timothy 1 verse 7. Please help us media. Let's really hurry up. We have to hurry up. Because we have some prayer to do. Are you seeing the things that are limiting us? Truly, I am determined this year to see that every one of us has a testimony. If nothing changes in your life this year, then it's your fault. But as far as the principles that will guarantee for you to experience the rain, by the grace of God, I will do my best. For God had not given us the spirit of fear. Put your name there. Just that first clause. One to read. One more time. Praise the Lord. There are many of our loved ones. 45 years. Brother, are you ready to get out of your father's house? I preached a message in 2008. It was a classic. Come out of your father's house. Thought provoking message to challenge people to leave their comfort zone. There are some of us. 30, 35, 40 we are still a big liability to our parents at home. Or God come out to say, what I have now is 20,000. Come out. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have sown seeds, you are giving. Look, let me tell you, if I am a father, my, when my child gets to a certain age, one day, you will just come and say, young man, in the name of Jesus, I release the blessing upon you. Go out. Out. That's it. I'm, I'm very serious. See, you need to push yourself out of your comfort zone this year. It's not just to say it's the year of the rain. Stand up and take action. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Change, change what you have been doing. Kill fear. Take action and die doing it. Queen Esther, God took her to the palace.
God removed Vashti and brought her for the salvation of Israel. But when Mordecai spoke to her, her man is plotting against these people. You better go and meet the king. She said, ah, please, oh, me too. His, his, his brig, they brought me here. Please, I'm not ready to face any embarrassment. And Mordecai said, sit down there in fear. Paraphrasing sit down there when they finish with us the jews they will now say all of you in this palace bring your bio data and they will find out you are a jew too and they will kill you and she said if i perish i perish this is the year some of us are going to say if i i'm writing that jam again is god speaking to somebody i'm writing that jam again this is the year but I tried the business, I failed. You will do it again this year. Master, we have cast, he said, we have cast the net of, how do you put it now? Right? We have toiled all night. He said, nevertheless, at thy word. I was going to get married. The best even did introduction. Later he called and he said, he's not doing it again. And now one godly brother is saying, I'm serious. He said, you look like that guy. Stand up and take action. Otherwise, you sit down and not get married all your life. In the name of Jesus, you will take action this year. Yeah. Praise the Lord. There are some of us, God is speaking. Fear. Fear. Do you know fear puts people in bondage? More people die. There are many sicknesses today that are as a result of fear and worry. Is that true? What you are afraid of has not happened, but you are, you are almost dying. From today now, people have started running out of Zaria. For instance, you can go if you want to go. What? I, <laughs> of course, I'm not teaching you to be careless and just roam around. But, but oh, come on now, people fear everything. You are sleeping in the night. You just light. Maybe it's the cloth you hung that just tilted in a way. Say, I, I don't like the way this cloth. Why is it tilting and coming back? Who is there? <laughs> fear. Fear has made people to say yes when they would have said no. And they committed themselves into things you have no business committing yourself. Fear. One of my friend's father, listen, true story. One of my friend's father, they would have been the earliest people to start pure water business in Nigeria. When God gave him that idea, it was in a full gospel businessmen's fellowship. Right? The idea came and he laughed. Thai water, haba. Who will pay for water? Are we idiots? There is stream, there is sun, there's light, there's stove to warm water. And he refused to take action. And certain people took action. Do you think those who took the action are, are crying now? This year, you must take a handkerchief as you are crying, be moving. Are you getting my point? You must challenge that devil. You have not broken through certain barriers. Nobody has ever crossed to the university in your family. Now you finish secondary school, for instance, and you're about to take that step, and, and everybody said, just, you have tried. You got diploma in, in, in software application. Are you not okay? You are ahead. Yet, every time you sleep, you see a PhD, and the devil is telling you, you cannot move. Tonight, we have come to call that devil a liar. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, I will take action. Say, I will take action. That's right. The second thing that stops action is laziness. Everybody say laziness. My goodness, our time is gone. Laziness. Very important. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 4, please. Proverbs 10 verse 4. And then later on, we'll look at Proverbs 22 verse 13. Media, please don't forget. Proverbs 10 verse 4. There are some of us the demon that needs to fly out of our life today not jump out fly out and never return is that spirit of laziness that inertia to move forward some of us sheer laziness the bible says he become poor that dealeth with what you never stay around me and you become lazy i have zero tolerance for lazy people a young man of 30 years by 11 30 12 he's still snoring on the bed you will beg for bread for sure there is no amount of fasting that will change that if you don't change it there are many lazy people we like a wolf free things look let me tell you there is a place for diligence 
if you must see the rain fall upon you this year. Are we getting blessed? He becometh poor that deals with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent does what? There are some of you, you are experts at begging. Day and night, you beg everybody. Right? Please, bros, I beg. You get 5K, help me. Next time, sister, sorry, I'm just knowing you. Don't be embarrassed. I need 2K. You, you degrade yourself because of this devilish attitude of laziness. There are grasses in people's houses to go and weed. There are things to do. But you get up and believe you're a big boy. Big boy with nothing in your pocket. You calm down. Don't try to look successful. Pay the price and be successful. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? You must reject laziness. There are some students. You see how some students live. You think, you think that they are professors. Right? 10 or 11 exams is in one week and you see the person just strolling with his boxers go and fetch a, 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 a bucket of water lazily he cannot even wait at the tap he will turn somebody else's water drag himself to the bathroom come out 30 minutes later huh? dirty boxers dirty singlets you can't wash it laziness all around you can't get up and sweep your room and some of our sisters are like that who do you want to marry? Tall, dark, and handsome. He must be a millionaire. You think God doesn't have sense? He said, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man sows. There are many people. See, look, let me tell you. Sometimes you may see me, you see some of the things we are doing, and you just don't be deceived by this, this ever water. If you want it, come and carry it. There is, there is more than this. Are you getting my point? First thing tomorrow morning, we are leaving for Katsina. It takes work. It's not just anointing. It takes diligence. Please, you need to talk to yourself and say, this year, the spirit of laziness, I curse you out of my life. Curse you out of my life. An assignment you can do now. You sit down and say, I will do it on Wednesday. You get zero. Right? Another assignment, you get zero. They just, they, they solve a question in class. They say, just copy it and get 10 marks. Say, I will do it later on. Look, procrastination, you must attack it this year. Hallelujah. You are working in the office of your boss because you think you come for koinonia and the person you are working for is here. It's no guarantee to be lazy. I will fire you. I employ you. You are not doing what I employ. In the name of Jesus, I will fire you. And you will come back and you will hear me preach. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is truly no food for a lazy man. Let me tell you the truth. You must get up. And, and be serious about your destiny and work. There are some of us this year. You have no business with relationship. If you are passing and you see any beautiful lady. Just say blood of Jesus and pass. Because this year is a year to you. Your own reign is coming to give you grace to stand up. No responsible parent will give her daughter to somebody who doesn't know where he's going. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Very important. But I believe that as we contend tonight in this miracle service, it's going to be a very fast walk. For me, I think this, this is it happening to you. If, if we close right now, I believe that you would have left with something. Many of us here belong to this category, this laziness category, right? Because social media, Facebook, Twitter, has and, and, and BBM has massaged our life of laziness. Something you can get up and do. You see a lot of people just to walk from one place to the other. You are taking a bike. Huh? Laziness. It's not like you are in a hurry for anything. You just load your phone and sit down in the afternoon. You are not working. You are not doing anything. You are a liability to everybody around you. And you are just, you are, you are sending Yarrow boys as a student, for instance, to go and buy you Mr. Biggs. Four, five thousand. They bring everything. You lie down with phone that you forced out of your father or mother. And you are making calls in the daytime. Even a worker is not doing that. 
you ping your life out and the person you are pinging is in the office making money you are there struggling the day you call him he stops responding to you please don't be a liability to anybody this year whoever has been ignoring you is because you are becoming a pest rise up and begin to be hard working and you will become friends again are you hearing what i'm saying especially for the brothers brothers say amen. amen let me talk to you for one minute before we start praying this year please please something must change there are some people sir five years six years no job not because they they have never taken their cv anywhere um, but my uncle said it now that uncle said it's wicked you came to stay in your friend's house when you stayed in his house he was a student he graduated served and is working you are still staying in his house he has gotten a job you are still staying in his house whoever that friend is drive that person out after miracle service tell him in the name of jesus christ i appreciate you three years is enough time for you to sit down get koinonia messages 2012 13 14 it will liberate you please out of my house sometimes you need to push some people into their breakthrough over pampering destroys hallelujah over pampering destroys there are times you need to get up and challenge yourself they send you money in two weeks you're already calling again laziness you won't do anything you hear that there is scholarship free there are many graduates many graduates you win is out they won't apply i think it finished today they won't do anything you said god told you you'll be an entrepreneur Huh? and you are not doing anything you've never gotten up to go for any seminar to build yourself you see a seminar you reject it you are not watching anything on youtube you are not going to sit and learn under people you are just sitting down bragging around with nonsense that's what a lot of young people are doing around huh? god blesses you with fifty thousand that can start something that can bless you you use it and buy a suit to prove a point to the people who are busy building their destinies they are not even seeing the point you must change this year in the name of jesus christ fear and laziness we are going to pray three serious prayer points the moment we pray these three prayer points tonight we'll start with the sick people we'll start ministering to the sick people as soon as we pray the three prayer points please begin to write your prayer requests while we minister those outside can you shout hallelujah one more time shout hallelujah the Lord will visit you in a mighty way in Jesus name praise the Lord rise up on your feet and let's pray success is not automatic there are laws there are laws this is our year of the rain God has spoken to us shown us the loopholes Lift your hands and begin to thank God for this word tonight. He that he loves, he chastises. Bless his name. Bless his name. Lift your hands inside and outside. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for this word. It has come to clean me up. It has come to purify me. It has come to challenge me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Prayer point number one. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Please say it like you believe it. In the name of Jesus. I receive grace to align my mindset to that of the word of God. Every thinking pattern every thought process that is not of god i challenge you in the name of jesus lift your voice and begin to pray father give me the mindset of victory i'm tired of carrying ideologies some of us have ideologies about church we have ideologies about praying in tongues ideologies about the holy spirit ideologies about prosperity ideologies about miracles ideologies about responsibility about marriage that are antagonistic to the ways of god 
the first miracle tonight is to pray I submit my mentality I submit my thought pattern please pray pray from your heart I refuse to be limited there is still a place for champions in life there is still a place for the great but you can never rise above your thought pattern you can never rise above your ideology you may have held on to it for years it's time to probe your ideologies it's time to probe your ideologies it's time to re-examine your mindset let this mind be in me that was in Christ Jesus the mindset of victory I don't see defeat in my life I don't see defeat with God I am unlimited with God I am unbeatable with God I am a champion ay, 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 ay. pray rejoice not over me my enemies for though I fall yet I will rise again hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two you are going to challenge that spirit of laziness are you getting my point fear and laziness let's combine it together say after me in the name of Jesus I challenge every spirit of fear for God has not given me the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind therefore I declare that fear is banished from my life I refuse to fear and I challenge laziness from today I receive the grace to be diligent no more laziness it's time to take action lift your voice and begin to pray time to take action 2015 time to take financial steps 2015 time to take spiritual steps 2015 time to take intellectual steps Go ahead and pray. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I cause the spirit of fear, fear of death, fear of past failure, every intimidation. Inside and outside, pray. Pray. I cause the spirit of fear. I cause the spirit of fear. I'm a champion. I can make it. I can break barriers. I can break barriers. I am well able. I am not weak. I am strong in the strength of the Lord. And I cause laziness. I cause laziness. Laziness to study the word. Spiritual laziness. Mental laziness. Physical laziness. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. As we pray this prayer point, my goodness, I already sense the power of God in a mighty way. That's right. As we pray this very prayer point, the healing power of God will begin to move. Hallelujah. 
I'm going to request those who are sick, those who came specifically for healing. You will find your way as, hold on, let's pray first before you come. I'd like you to come believing that you will part with that sickness forever. Hallelujah. The last prayer point. Say in the name of Jesus. Oh God. Reveal to me. The strategy. For possessing my blessing. Reveal to me. The strategy. In the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and pray. Lord I cry. What is the strategy? What is the strategy? Come on, pray, Koinonia. I cry unto the spirit of wisdom. Show me the strategy for my prosperity. Show me the strategy for my blessing. Show me the strategy for my lifting. Show me the strategy to get the attention of my destiny help us show me the strategy for the church growth show me the strategy for the expansion of my business show me the strategy for five points show me strategy for first class show me the strategy to pass the jam show me the strategy hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, hey, hey. show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny show me the strategy to unlock my marital destiny pray show me the strategy oh yes the strategy is revealed in the place of prayer in the place of prayer Make sure you are praying tonight. Show me the strategy to open me up to the next level of destiny. Show me the strategy. I'm tired of making mistakes. I'm tired of moving in circles. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. I'm tired of marking time. It's time to break forth. Hallelujah. Begin to pray now and say, God, visit me. We're going to do, the Holy Ghost will do a very quick walk. Very quick walk. Hallelujah. Those who are sick, I'd like you to come up and line up here very quickly. If you came here for the miracle service for healing, please come and line up. Ushers, help them, coordinate them. Let's have it very quickly. While that is happening, make sure you write your request. There is a mystery of answered prayer in this house. Make sure, please. If you have not written your prayer request, start writing it. I don't care what the situation is. I'd like you to write it and let's drop it before God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, oh mighty God. You are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy, Lord. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake Those of you in front, I know you came here because of the testimonies you have had. I want you to know that your situation will not be different. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want you to believe in the power of God. There are certain conditions. Listen to me. There are conditions in this place that are entirely demonic. Hallelujah. It's going to be a fast one. 
I don't know if we'll have time to take testimonies or not, but because there, I, I really, I really, really need to rush with time and let's do a lot. Please, if we end late today, I apologize in advance. We'll do our best to kill time, but please, wait because God has something to do in your life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. It's called a miracle service. We thank you for the anointing of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. Everybody make sure you participate. Now if, there are, if you have loved ones. Who are sick. You can connect. You can tell them to connect. Praise the Lord. You don't need to come out for them. But you can call them or do whatever. And tell them look. Connect to what God is doing. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Worship team help us. Praise the Lord. Father we give you all the praise. And we trust you to glorify the name of your son right now. In Jesus name. Go ahead, please. Who brought this lady? Who brought this lady? Who came with her, please? If you brought somebody, let's know. Please, we are not faking it here. What's, what's wrong with her legs? Who brought her? My dear, look at me. What's wrong with your leg? Huh? You what? There is a wound in my leg. My leg is swollen. Your leg is swollen. I'm looking in the spirit and I'm seeing a charm. Look at me. What what did you say? You sat in what? I woke up. So you woke up and you saw your leg. leg. It's not a wound. This is a charm. In the name of Jesus, I break it. I curse it. Look at me. You've not been able to walk. I can walk for long. Okay, look at I me. Keep coming out look at me. Pause. It's coming out with pus. I curse it. Look at me. Just look at me. Keep your legs. Just look at me. Don't look at your legs. Look at me. Look at me. Not, don't look at the legs. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. come. Just come. Don't look at me. Look at me. Come. Walk. Come on. Give Jesus praise. Look at what is happening. <laughs> See, she's even surprised. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Can you climb up here? Climb by yourself. It's witchcraft. Don't be afraid. Help her if she needs any help. Okay, come. Move your legs. Just do what I'm doing. Move your legs. Move your legs. I curse that devil in the name of Jesus Christ. I break that power of witchcraft right now. I release that. Come on now, Koinonia. Give Jesus praise. God is healing people in this place. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that anyone that has orchestrated anything for you to fall into in the name of Jesus Christ, this night, I command those powers to be broken in the name of Jesus. My dear, it never returns to you again. And this veil that I see over you in the spirit, I command that veil to go now in the name of Jesus Christ. Give God praise. Help us worship him. Please, let's hurry. You are the one who brought him. No, no, no. Talk, talk on his behalf. Let's save time, please. Okay. Our time. Said I have been sick since 1980. 1998. 1998. Yes. Is he hearing what I'm saying? Yes, he hearing. Okay. You Bless you, Daddy. Thank you. Since 1998, what's yes. the sickness? Liver. Liver problem. Liver problem, sir. Mm. Sir. What What are the symptoms? What happens to him? Okay, sir. The baby was swimming. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pray for you okay. right now. Mm -hmm. When I pray for you, that swelling will go down now. Now. And you'll be able to walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. I curse that spirit. You are a spirit. Answer to the name of Jesus right now. I command the swollen stomach to go down right now. You see what is happening to you? In the name of Jesus. The heat sensation you're feeling is the power of God. Thank you, Jesus. Heal right now. Sir, please come. Because the devil wants to use this and put stroke on you. Um,
Would you mind if, if I ask you to jump? Will you jump? Okay. Just just try. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. Just lift it as high as you can. Look at me. Don't look at the legs. Go ahead, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ. Alright, let's let's try. Just jump a little. Don't be afraid. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now walk, sir. Come. Just walk as fast as you can. As fast as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ. My God is awesome. You are healed completely. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I stepped here, I saw this woman tied from head to toe. This is what I'm seeing. Head to toe. And I'm seeing blood all over you. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. What's wrong with her? Um, suddenly, she just grows lean like this. Mommy, There's look no at me. Ache. You will not die. Hold my hands. Just hold my hands. Just hold it. Look at me. Just look at me. Thank you, Jesus. Now I curse this power. Let mama go now. In the name of Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse that spirit. Let her go now. I lose you. What couldn't she do? Like Parkinson's disease. Mama, in the name of Jesus Christ. Walk. Come. 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 Climb by yourself. Come. 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 Follow me. Just follow me, Mama. Look at this. Come on now, Koinonia. Give God praise. Can you lift your hands? See, she's laughing. Try to lift your hands, Mama. Can you lift your hands? Can you lift your hands? Is it which of the hands can she lift? Okay, go ahead. Lift, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Bring it down. Lift your hands. Come on, Koinonia. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise. In the name of Jesus, look at me. Lift your legs. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the name of Jesus. I cause that spirit. My mind is released right now. Koinonia, give God praise. Let's celebrate what God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that power. Come, I need to pray for you too. Your mother, right? I pray for you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm seeing this thing. If I don't pray for you, it will affect you too. Right now, I curse. Lord, he's a worker in this house. Therefore, I curse that spirit. You are the sister. Lift your hands. If I don't pray for you, you have problem with marriage. You are young now, but we need to pray. This thing is the whole family thing. Out! In the name of Jesus Christ. I release you from this act of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Salvation returns to this family. Go ahead and massage her legs. Hallelujah. Please, we are going to really, really be fast. As soon as we pray for you, just give room. Usher, start collecting the prayer request. If you have somebody's picture as I come, I may not be able to talk again. And so we'll just lay our hands. Believe God. Believe God that the situation will change in Jesus' name. My God is
is an iron in your leg. Oh, that's what stops you from moving. But can you stretch it? In the name of Jesus, Father, careful. Although there is an iron in your leg, in the name of Jesus, may there be a miracle. I command this shorter leg to grow out now by the Spirit of God. Madam, look at me. Do you want to try walking? Uh -uh. I'm not asking you what you have. You came here because you believe God can help you. Is that true? You believe that? Okay, as careful as you can, move your legs. You are, you are related to her? Come. Who are you? Your sister, madam? All right. Don't cry. Don't cry. Please. Come, madam. Do you feel pain? You feel pain because of the iron. It's difficult now for us to... But after I pray for you, can you talk to the doctors to look at your legs and look at the iron? They'll be coming on Wednesday. Okay, fine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we agree that as they come on Wednesday and check this leg, they will remove this iron and she will walk normally. Look at, look at this. Look at what the power of God is doing. In the name of Jesus Christ, I curse that spirit. Let there be a miracle right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let her have a seat. Please quickly, let's, let's save time. Worship team, help us. Let's not have... They will remove the iron, madam, and you will walk normally in the name of Jesus Christ. I need to pray for you. Yes, I need to pray for you, madam. Because as I'm looking at you, I'm seeing pains. I'm seeing pains, um, like abdominal pains. And the Lord is asking me to minister to you. Can I pray for you? Hold my hands. Jesus, do a miracle right now. I cause that pain by the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please just line them forward. Let them just come forward in the name of Jesus. I don't need to ask you what the situation is. I really want you to believe that. Praise the Lord. I, I don't want you to think that maybe if I don't ask you, it means I don't give value to you. No. It's not even me doing the miracle. Right? It's the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Such an awesome God. Such an awesome God. Hallelujah. Please rise up, everybody. Rise up, everybody. We're going to cause every wicked power. Please listen. Hallelujah. Look at me. I told us that one of the benefits and the blessings of prayer is the ability to cause limiting powers. It's called a miracle service. And this is January. Hallelujah. We believe in the full gospel and everything Jesus died to give. Listen, every power that has tied anyone's destiny down, it's time for it to go. Are you listening to me? Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Go ahead and pray and say, Father, every spirit that is not of God looming around my life and my family, please make sure you are praying that as the word of God comes now, there will be mighty, mighty deliverance. Lord, let there be deliverances. Break limitations over people's lives. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 The reason why the reason why we do deliverance is not is not working against the fact that Jesus says we are this and that and that it is on the strength of that the Bible says although he has put all things under his feet he said we do not yet know I hear a lot of people criticize the ministry of deliverance and all of that um, while I know that there are exaggerations here and there let me tell you something the people of God must be subjected to the full weight of all that God's power and anointing can do. are you following me now there are people who have struggled here. You love God, but doors will just not open. Let me tell you, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. And by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I'm going to minister to people right now. I see an angel of the Lord moving, and a lady is going to shout. I don't know why God does these things. 
under the anointing when that happens it's a sign that the spirit of God is ready to move and deliver people lift your hands hear me brothers and sisters it takes the power of God to subdue principalities and there are some of you right now both for you and your family there are forces that will not let you go but this night and right now my goodness there is the fire of the spirit at the count of three it's not just a recitation you're going to shout that name the name that paid access for your liberty bring up bring them out my goodness deliverance is already happening inside and outside there will be mighty angels there is the sword of the spirit lord let there be deliverance every family every destiny tied under any yoke of bondage i invoke it in the spirit that at the count of three those devils are under fire one two three come out now i command powers be gone now i cause principalities i cause spirits i cause powers inside outside the angel of the lord is moving i command witchcraft bring them out spirits of ancestry in the name of jesus the powers that have tied down man's destinies the forces that have refused to let you go right now i come with an apostolic anointing and in the name that is above all names let fire fall from heaven over your life over your academics over your marriage through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves lift your hands was he shouting one more time please bring them listen for some of you what will happen right now is not just for you alone but for your family just keep them down there hallelujah malakata and i see this affecting many ladies because i see marriage is being tied makoto tobakata sheketelekaya as you shout that name jesus you may not even know that that thing is in your family but all of a sudden physical fire physical fire will begin to burn right now on the count of three i challenge those powers one two three go 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 i cause that spirit delay delay i cause that spirit inside and outside i command that devil of delay to go now i command that power tying your destiny i command that power tying your breakthrough i command that power tying your family the price has been paid by the blood of jesus i break every legal access by the blood of jesus i break every legal access by the blood of jesus i break every legal access by the blood of jesus i release marriages i release miracles i command breakthrough fire is burning i command breakthrough i set those altars on fire i set those covens on fire hallelujah lift your hands where are those who have been oppressed academically lord where are they there are people who would have moved forward 
as I speak right now, fire is coming on people. Fire is coming. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. Release the academics now. 2015, the year of the rain. Release the academics now. I command those powers. I challenge them. They must lead one. There is a family the Lord is showing me. You have been under stagnation for 10 years. 10 solid years. But as I prophesy right now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. I command that family to be released now. Hallelujah. In the name that is above all names, I pray and I prophesy. The Lord is showing me men whose hands have been tied. And, and see, when your hands are tied, it means the capacity for favor and the capacity to move forward is not there. Lift your hands. Some of you will feel physical fire. Physical fire on your hands. There are chains burning. Lord, where are they? Let the sword of favor break them free from every oppression. Right now as I speak, anyone whose hands are tied in the spirit, I command those hands to be loose now. I command those hands to be loose now. The fire is falling, falling, falling inside and outside, falling. I break the chain. My goodness, there are angels outside. The fire is falling. Chains of delay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In one minute, lift up the exact situation you want God to change. Begin to talk to him. Go ahead before prophecy comes. Please don't keep quiet. No matter how impossible it is, there is an anointing. Inside and outside, make sure you are talking to the Lord. This and that and that are my requests. Do a miracle. Some of you need a 24 hour miracle. Now all those here in front, in the name of Jesus, and by the fire of the Holy Spirit, at the count of three, not only will those devils leave, they must release your family members. I speak to every spirit. You know my voice. I represent the embassy of heaven. And in the name of Jesus, at the count of three, you will leave now. One, two, three. Go, go, go. Go, go. Go, go. Never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Never to return. Go. Go. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this request. Your requests are there. Please, in case you've not dropped yours, locate it quickly to the ushers. It's not a ritual. There is a mystery of answered prayer. Hallelujah. The Bible says how that Ezekiah took the request before God. The threats may be joblessness. It may be impossible situations. As I kneel upon this request and we pray together, just for one or two minutes, see, I assure you, I assure you, you will return with a testimony. 
except you refuse to come and testify stretch your hands and begin to pray thank you Jesus Remember last week we thought that words activate spiritual laws. Hallelujah. I want you to receive. For some of you, there will be an instant performance in the name of Jesus. I want to start by praying for families. Every family that has been in a state of stagnation, please lift your hands inside and outside. I'm prophesying now. Every family represented in this place in the name of jesus christ in this year of the rain i command that between now and next month miracle service let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs let there be dramatic breakthroughs By the agency of the spirit we activate every law that needs to be in motion in the name of jesus the laws of favor the laws of destiny help us in the name of jesus i pray anyone here who has been under any academic bondage from secondary school to master's phd right now in this year of the rain i command speed for you i declare move forward now move forward now make progress now move forward now in the name of jesus i pray for anything that has died in your hands business the works of your hands relationships in the name that is above all names let resurrection happen in your life now please believe what i'm saying believe what i'm saying god is changing people's situations this is how god changes situations by the power of his prophetic word i say it again whatever has died I speak to that which was dead. Come back to life now. I command every blood condition, whoever is standing here and you are SS, right now, we change that genotype to AA. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
I cause hepatitis be crushed to the root in the name of Jesus. We cause HIV. You leave God's people in the name of Jesus. Everyone here who has been oppressed by spirits, you sleep in the night and they oppress you. Reketeke poto shupatala makata. Sheketerebadia. In the name of Jesus, let the fire of the Holy Ghost bring deliverance to you now. Ay, ay, ay. Let the fire of the Holy Spirit bring deliverance to you now. There are people here, it works for others until it gets to your turn. Then it fails right now in the name of Jesus. I command that the last time that tragedy happened in your life, the power of God is moving on this word, moving strong on this word. The last time it happened, the mystery behind that tragedy, I cause it in the name of Jesus. I declare that in this January, between now and next month's miracle service, what you could not do in the whole of 2014, may my God empower your hand to do it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every dying CGPA here. Hear the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I command it to come alive. There are people here. Students. Your true status is first class. But something has tied you down. Your true status is four points. But something has tied. Whatever that something is. I lift it off your life now. In this year, 2015, go back to your departments and break barriers. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every business here. Whatever has stopped it from working, in the name of Jesus, we command it to come alive now. Whoever needs to come into your life between now and next miracle service and open a door for you I call them forth now I call them forth now I declare whoever is jobless and looking for a job here or your family members in the name that is above all names where they said there are no jobs we create jobs now believe it believe it we create jobs now in the name of Jesus Christ whoever has been assigned by my father to favor you and has refused to respond to you in the name of Jesus may the Lord compel them to respond in the name of Jesus I pray for your spiritual life whatever has robbed you of an effective prayer life every worry everything that has robbed you I command fresh impartation of prayer grace receive it now fresh impartation of prayer fire whatever makes you study the Bible and you don't understand may the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now and I pray for you every habit in your life masturbation pornography and any other thing that is not of god that has robbed you of your christian integrity you love god but you find things pushing you that embarrass you right now i agree with you be delivered now i agree with you be delivered now hallelujah in the forthcoming election you are preserved in the name of jesus whoever comes to destroy you will die before he gets to you in the name of jesus as you travel on the road you are preserved you cannot be a victim of accident in the name of jesus 
I establish the covenant of peace upon your life. You are protected by the angels of heaven. I declare right now that in 2015, living from hand to mouth, that spirit of begging, living from hand to mouth, by the mystery of divine supply, I bail you out of that wicked situation. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you. Whatever you wrote here as a request, right now I agree with you that it is turned into a testimony. I say it one more time. Whatever you wrote here as a request, I agree with you. We turn it into a testimony. By the power that turned the rod of Moses into a serpent and back into a rod, I turn what was here as a, as a prayer request by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it become a testimony in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Every factor that must be in place for you to stand here and testify, I release it in the name of Jesus. I pray we pray for our lecturers every lecturer that has been victimized and any lecturer that the devil is eyeing to bury this year in the name of Jesus by the mystery of the blood they are preserved I'm speaking any position that belongs to any God-fearing lecturer that is being truncated by powers of darkness we stand as the parliament of heaven in this city and we enforce compliance in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray for you if there is one thing that should happen in your life let it be indescribable favor 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 I prophesy it from the depths of my heart if you have never seen favor happen in your life you will see favor that will make you cry financial favor marital favor academic favor spiritual favor receive it in the name of jesus hallelujah lift your hands and bless the lord thank you jesus hallelujah now you're here you've never given your heart to the lord jesus you've never made him lord of your life we're out of time please keep standing everybody let's honor these people you are here and you have never given your life to Christ. Remember we said the basis for your victory is what Jesus Christ has done. Wherever you are, or you have once given your life to Christ, but for some reason you found your life going haywire and you need to make your ways right. Don't say time is gone. Please, wherever you are, inside or outside, you might be a new student. You've been a Christian all your life or you may be new in this town. I pray right now that you respond to the call of God. Wherever you are, you are returning to Jesus or you are making decisions for the first time. Please make your way to the front. Be bold about it. Be bold about it. I know God is talking to somebody. Don't wait for anybody to come. You are the first person. Find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. Please make sure you celebrate them as they come. Celebrate them. God bless you. Those outside, no matter how far you are, make your way to the front. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me, before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. If you deny me before men, young and old, make your ways. You are not too far. Don't let the devil say you are far. Make your way. Run to the front. Run to the front. Forget about your neighbor or who you came with. It's a personal affair tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Lift your hands as I leave you to pray. Say after me, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died for me. Tonight, I repent of my sins. I obtain forgiveness and cleansing. Wash me with the blood of Jesus. I receive eternal life into my spirit. And I declare that I'm a changed person. The power of sin is broken over my life. And I'll never be the same in the name of jesus now keep your hands lifted father thank you you brought these ones to your throne 
may their decisions be genuine preserve them by the power of the holy spirit they will never be the same i break the power of sin over your life you have eternal life into your spirit and i declare that you're of the hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching this from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain